Disclaimer, this video, like all videos featured on this channel, is definitely intended for mature audiences. This video is likely to contain profane language, content is inappropriate for minors. Video is not for kids. Welcome to the Dr. Green Dumb Show. Dr. Green Dumb Show. Lots of help. <laughs> Dr. Green Thumb Show live on Twitch, Discord, YouTube, and the home site. www.bereal.tv. What it do? Uh, to my right, Mr. Goodlight, DJ C Minus. What up? Happy Monday. And our special guest today, my homeboy, the legendary Fat Lip. What's up, y'all? How y'all doing, man? Hell yeah. Thank you for having me. Good to have you up in here, bro. Yeah. We're up. We got uh, the Treehouse Crew, Bolton Blombo, Bra Bra, and the Dominator. Yo, yo, what up? Whoa, whoa. Oh, my mic is on. There we go. I couldn't hear myself. What up, B? How oh, you doing? Oh, boy. He's already starting up. All whoa, right. whoa. We got, um, we also have at third base the utility man, Trace Noons. That's right. Today got me on the hot corner, third base. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Hey, uh, I can't tell you how excited. We are to like to start this tour with y'all, man. Yes. We, yeah, man. We did it way back in the day. We did a tour way back in the day, and it was off the chain, but it's it's good to be like rocking with y'all again, man. Man, it's, it's yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun, bro. Hell like, yeah. But I'm trying to remember the back in the, that was, uh, was it with 211? Uh, 311. 311. Yeah. That was crazy. Yeah, yeah, that was crazy. And you know what? I'm going to take this time. I'm gonna apologize, cause I remember they dared me to throw a plate of of like cheese and ham <laughs> in the hallway. Oh shit! And I did it, and you came out in the hallway. He's like, "Yo, who did this shit?" <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna apologize. Oh man, hey, yeah. listen, you ain't got to apologize. Back in the day, I mean, we've all like see that. I think that's a part of like what we do is like one of the rite of passages like when we're coming up we got to destroy some shit right. or oh, yeah. or something like that because i can't tell you how many dressing rooms send dog fucked up right, I mean, we, got the, right. we got the bill for that we're like whoa because <laughs> you used to hear about that too like you used to hear about like axel rose and all of yeah. the rock mm -hmm. and roll stuff so then he was like when it was your turn, yeah, you know, to do that rock star shit, you was like, true that. I mean, like, it. you know, and Led Zeppelin, Led Zeppelin wrote a book. Uh, what was it called? Hammer of the Gods Hammer or something like that. Yeah. And they were talking about how they were like destroying dressing rooms, like throwing shit out the window <laughs> of dressing rooms, like just. Like we're like, what is this? Is this what you do? That was one of Axel's stunts that you're talking about. Is he threw a TV out the window of one of the hotels here in Hollywood off to like yeah. the 13th floor, right out on the sunset? And that's the thing. They were all trying to emulate like Zeppelin. They were trying, to, yeah, live that life. Yeah, like this is okay. This is what rock stars this do. What you're supposed to do. We don't give a fuck. Yeah, the riot house. It was the Hyatt house, but then they nicknamed it the riot house because there was always something ah. popping off over there. Sounds about right. And you know us as hip hop artists, we were coming out with that punk rock, rock star mentality where we don't give a fuck neither. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what: the most creative thing I've heard, like in in a in like destroying a room or that sort of thing, like was uh, can't remember what group it was, but they would have their crew come in and like put all the furniture on the ceiling, like nail it to the ceiling. <laughs> <and shit. laughs> yeah. So, so when, uh, you know, the housekeeping came in, came in, they'd be like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. That was, yeah, that was, they was getting creative with it, too. Yeah. They must have just 
fucked up everything so so much. They was like, man, what can we do now? What can we do now? What can we do now? It's like, we got to think of something else. We already threw all the TVs out the window. You got to be pretty thorough and efficient to get, like, couch and a table and chairs and whatever else. <laughs> that, that's what I was Up thinking. on the fucking ceiling. How are we going to bolt that thing to the ceiling? <laughs> and then at that point, you're actually, like, paying money to fuck shit up. <laughs> to fuck shit up. Yeah. That's the other thing. <laughs> yeah. When you receive the bill at the end of the tour, because it all comes at the end, you don't see it well as it's happening right there. It's like, okay, well, this is what you made. Then you paid everybody out, and then this is what you made. But uh, we had to pay <laughs> the damages to this hotel, this dressing room, this fucking this, that, the other, boom. And now here's what you got. And you actually owe us money now. <laughs> <laughs> you actually didn't make any yeah. money on this yeah. tour. You broke even. <laughs> or you owe money. Oh, that's the worst. Right. And you're like, well, shit, that's rock and roll. <laughs> yeah. yeah, baby. And then you, and then you, you just, you mad after because you couldn't make, you spend all that time on the road. You didn't make no money. And like, really, you, you're mad at yourself because... You know, <laughs> but you got stories. But you got stories <laughs> and memories. Oh yeah, we we all did it, man. Shit, I've yeah. broken some shit on the road. That was like when I saw the bill at the end, I was like, <gasps> Oh, <man. laughs> I'll never do that again. Yeah, <laughs> like, I'm gonna think yeah. twice before I break some shit again. Oh, but man. then I broke some shit again. Broke some shit yeah. again. Hey, I broke. I I broke up. I was breaking up, literally breaking up with my girl <laughs> when I was in London. On the phone. Oh, like, man. This, you know, it's before cell phones. Yeah. So we was really on the hotel phone for like three hours. Oh, man. Same situation. Get that bill. Get that the bill. Mm. Damn. And yeah. And you kick yourself in the ass because it's like, damn, I let this happen. And, but you know, hey, when we're young, it's what we, you know, we're reckless. Those are, that's the cost of being reckless. You know what I'm saying? We learn it later. And we say, okay, we wouldn't do some shit like that again. We, it, besides, technology is different now. Yeah. So it's that is like that crazy I got a plan. I got a, I got a monthly plan. <laughs> yeah, <of> got a <laughs> monthly, <laughs> monthly plan for any shit I got to deal with while I'm out here. Oh man, it, it it was crazy then though. Like, yeah, if you were going through a breakup while you were overseas, like rolling, shit was expensive. Sh shit was expensive and stressful. Because, like, you're helpless at that point. You can't do shit if it's coming from the other end. If you're the one initiating it, I suppose it ain't nothing. But right. if you're the one trying to negotiate it, it deal with yeah, it. Yeah, that's the, <laughs> that's the hard shit right there, boy. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, well. Show goes on. Show goes on. Got to keep it going. That's right. Indeed. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah, man. Hey, I remember we were doing, Um, I think it was, I think it was, uh. <sighs> I'm going to say it was smoking grooves or something. Me and Bobo were coming back from breakfast. We were walking back to our hotel, and we ran into you. You were on a beach cruiser or something. You were riding a bike through D.C. like randomly. Yeah. It was the craziest shit. We just ran into Lip. Like, wait a minute. There goes Lip, right? <laughs> the, oh, shit. Damn. Yeah, I don't. I, I think y'all had a show the next night or the night before. I can't remember what y'all what you said, but I, you guys were playing there. This was the nineties. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Probably. Shit, we about to go to D. I'm about to go to DC right now after this. Right after this, right? Y'all yeah, got a show yeah, there yeah, tomorrow yeah. night before yeah. the tour starts. Yes, sir. Oh boy. Oh boy. Back at it again. Thursday night, Boston. <laughs> right. Just kicking it off, in Boston. Us Usually I don't remember these things. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, we just go, and, yeah. but for some reason I'm remembering today. Lip, let me ask you, were you excited about going on the tour? Like, any cities jump out at you? Like, oh, I can't wait to get here. New York's going to be good. Yeah, um, Brooklyn, yeah. I seen, uh, man, okay, I'm going to tell you. Ontario. Ontario, yeah. <laughs> May 4th. May 4th. Only thing, I was looking at <clears throat> the lineup, and I was trying to figure out the order. Yeah. Like, it's that, that lineup is so crazy, it's just like, yeah, man, man, that's yeah, that's gonna be crazy. But yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah, that was that was a stacked bill, boy. People got to get there early so they get the you know dose of everything. Yep. Yeah. And you know, like what I find is on bills like these, people do show up early. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Like it, it ain't like the days of old where like <laughs> if you came on early, 
it, it, it was going to be like a half house. But these days, people fucking want, like, they want to get their money's worth. They're going in early. That's just going to be stacked. That and the yeah. historical value of that lineup right there, you know, with all the history going on. Oh, now. yeah. I mean, this right here, those are legendary, legendary acts right there. And, you know, if you have a chance to see them, especially all together like this, I mean, this is going to be next level. Yeah, because I don't, if I'm looking at this, I don't think I ever did no shows except uh, with Souls and, yeah, Cypress. Yeah. I did nothing with Bone Thug, 3-6. Three, three, I mean, that's going to be crazy. That's a crazy-ass lineup uh, yeah. right there. Mm -hmm. Dilated. Ghost face. Woo! It's going to be stacked. Yeah, man. Oh, for true. Oh, uh, yeah. People are going to get their music on that day. Their, oh, you yeah. know, that their hip hop fix. Because mm -hmm. everybody's going to be bringing that shit. And that's that's what I love about festivals like that with lineups like that. Everybody, like, kind of makes each other better. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's like, oh, shit, they're, they're going to bring it. We got to bring it. Man, it's a good time, man. It's a good time for the, for the festivals. Like you said, like, I almost feel like. You know how like EDM had that had that moment where everybody was just doing those huge events. I feel like yeah. hip hop is coming to that. Yeah, yeah, you know absolutely. And it's just like yeah, because this where is this at the arena, right? This, yeah, this is at yeah. Toyota Arena. Yeah, this ain't the club. This ain't the club. <laughs> yeah, that ain't the club. Uh, no. Nope. <laughs> Cause uh, shout out to LL and uh, Quest Love. Yeah, throwing that um, what was it? The uh, Force hip Tour. Yeah, that shit was crazy at the forum. It's good Ooh. to see LL getting getting involved in promotions like that, and like you know, pushing that hip hop shit forward. Like you know, with the Rock the Bells, yeah, that he's got going on, and uh, just some of the other events that he's that he's uh been taking part of, and and included like help putting the that hip the hip hop fifty yeah. celebration together. That was, that was a pretty dope. Dope thing him and Quest Love put together. Man, that was incredible. That was yeah. oh yeah. It, you know, it was it was crazy because it felt like a big ass reunion of so, or of sorts. Cause not all of us have been in the same room like that together in a very long time. Like not since the days of like the the conventions, like, you know, the Jack the Rappers and the yeah. New York uh music seminar or whatever. Um, it felt very much like that. When everybody was, you know, like in the same place, very rare, man. This shit was a great feeling seeing everybody like that. They need to do a documentary about uh, that. Those they could have. They yeah. should have. They yeah. should have had a documentary. They did crew. the Freak Nick, right? Yeah. So it's like that yeah. was kind of like similar to like like that the those cultural community events where people was coming from, you know, all over the country, you know, at those uh, at those music events, like you say, Jack the Rapper. Oh yeah. Matter of fact, that's I think that's where we met uh Paul Stewart. Yeah. That's where we kinda like Hell yeah. That led us to our record deal. That's where the networking happens, you that know. Was, yeah, yeah, exactly. A lot of labels that uh were just signing groups, um, and some maybe putting out their second record or second album, whatever, they'd go to these conventions and, you know, like promote. Yeah. You know, hey, this is what we got cracking we're gonna do a showcase tonight right. and the showcases were dope yeah because that's when you got to see everybody on the come up and like you knew who was gonna pop right off and you knew who was gonna fizzle oh for sure and and and, and it was it was crazy man and those conventions also used to like you know have a lot of the djs fly out and you know they would specifically target a lot of shows towards djs either on the mix show or on the streets like and like, all right, like we're gonna get them to, you know, if they they're gonna if they like what they see and hear tonight, they're gonna be hitting this up, you know. Right. So that was like one of the smartest things, like you know, going to Gavin, Gavin. back in the day. Yeah, I was uh, trying to think of yeah, yeah Gavin. the Gavin. Gavin was in that the was Bay. the West Coast. That was the one up in, yeah. in the Bay Area. Yeah, yeah. that was the one. That's I think, in, in a, and I want to say, I think that was one of the first times I think I met you. B was it yeah. like a Gavin in like nineteen ninety sure. or something? Yeah, they had us going to the Gavin early on. You know what I mean? That we we would get on with everybody down there i mean it was it was it was pretty tight we didn't we didn't expect to get accepted up in the bay like that but it, there was mad love since that time to now but the gavin was tight that was like one of our conventions because there was yeah. a number of east coast conventions and there was you know obviously jack the rapper in the south but you know the one we had was the gavin yeah and it seemed like they were a little more uh like it was more hip hop 
and like you were hearing, like, you know, I, I forgot the name of, uh, like Kelly Wu over there at the Gavin who ended up becoming, you know, a main, uh, one of the promo guys over at, uh, priority, but they just, yeah. they seem to be so like hip hop based. Like one of the Gavin shows that I got to see was DJ premier DJing for, uh, J Ru and then opening for black sheep. That's crazy. And it was just like, you know, as a, as a, um, you know, imagine if motherfuckers had like the ability to capture that like we have now. Ooh, Those classic man. ass Those shows. shows, man. Yeah, dude, all the shows that like we could have at least got footage of that happened that we have no footage of. Yeah. Only our memories. Only memories, dude. Shit. And a lot of those Gavins were done in like intimate settings, smaller, you know, kind of large style uh, size clubs, but yeah. still nothing crazy where it was still an intimate show. To yeah, like there was no production. Really there was like a them. stage. Yeah. Right. yeah. The lights, the turntables, and the mics. Yeah. That's it. Boom. Yeah. yeah. Like our first Gavin, it was so it was that night, the, first, the Friday night was the black sheep and uh oh and then guru came out with jay so they did on the man live that was like something i thought i'd never ever seen mm. and then the next night it was a duck down showcase so it was smith and wesson and black moon right. oh wow and then the third night was at the dna lounge and it was the in, dna lounge it was the invisible scratch pickles and yeah like just so i got to see that for the first time so it was like that was one of yeah. the you know you got to see so much good music and hear it and be oh, like exposed so to all this new shit and you would just be like this is i'm coming back next year yeah for sure. gavin was cool yeah every yeah, year cause, yeah because all the events that would happen around it were the shit yeah the shows showcases whatever yep it, it was awesome it happened in february i think right i think so yeah, yeah february every year uh -huh. You struck Damn. a nerve with B when you mentioned the DNA Lounge. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, that's where we filmed "Insane in the Brain," the right. video for that. Yeah, it and that place was crazy. Not just on that day of that the video, whatever, because we did a real show that day, and we said, okay, we're gonna film this song in between, you know, other songs within in, within the show, and we were letting people know, hey, we're filming for this video. So just know this, right? And it just made them crazier and shit. So, <laughs> you know, that place is a special place to us. We went and played that place like a dozen times after that because it's it's a place that we're tied to in the Bay Area. That that and the Fillmore. Definitely. Ooh. Those are the two right. places that we're tied to because we filmed um, uh, live at the Fillmore mm -hmm. out there and, and put that shit out. So... And a big shout out to the DNA and the Fillmore in San Francisco because today is 415 day. Yeah. Oh boy. There go. Is. Is, that, is that what you, there you go? Yeah. All right, it's 415 yeah. day. Okay, yeah. I didn't have that on a sheet anywhere. I see you got your red and gold on. Oh, don't even try that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, who directed that uh, insane video? Damn, that is a good question. McG? It wasn't McG. No, it wasn't McG. Uh, Josh something. Um, Beery, can you find that out? Oh. Uh, Josh Taft. Josh Taft. There you go. Oh, okay. Boom. He was good, man. He was like a hey, huh? Yeah, he he was uh very creative, this dude. Like at first when he was telling us the idea, we we're like, oh, okay, all right. We'll see. It's I mean, it's a live show. We we had never, you know, like filmed a video based off of a of, of a live show, but it wasn't just that part, like the energy. It was like the other little special effects shit he was doing with like that mirror thing. Yeah, and all that—that's kind of what brought it all together. And and uh, man, salute to Josh Taff. You gave yeah. Us when I think of the video, I think of like a special effect in my yeah. mind. That's why. I, that's why I asked. Cause, yeah, because it's like a light that was kept coming in across your face or something. Yeah, he had that that part, and then the thing that looked like a mirror was this fabric that looks—I can't remember what it's called—but it looks like it's a mirror, right? And you could. Poke it. Oh, and it kept making. Okay. Yeah, yeah. and it kept doing that, like the like the mirror. We were tapping it to the beat, and it looked like the the mirror was doing, but yeah. it was actually a, a thing like a, a a fabric that that looks like like Whoa. a mirror. Like you could see yourself right through it. Hey, and you say he was trying to explain that to you. You was like, I'm like what the fuck are you talking, <laughs> about? <laughs> are you talking about? And, you know, and then it's it, gonna be a fabric. Yeah, we're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now poke into it, and we're like, on <laughs> beat. And it and it looked pretty fucking cool when he did it. I was like, all right. But when it came together with that sound of the beat, yeah, and all of that, sh all of those little little intricacies came together as one. It was like, yeah, he popped insane. it off. 
I gotta say, like, I didn't see the vision on it, but like, he actually fucking made it pop too. But that was the history for me of the song. Like, when they they picked it as the single, I was like, really, you want that? Why not? We ain't going out or one of the because we were always trying to go darker and harder, you know. But yeah. they heard the the marketability in a fun song, yeah, and insane in the brain, and we're like, well, okay, if that's the one you want. I didn't fight him on it because realistically I'm the artist, right? We're too connected to the music to to like actually think about the marketing and what what would be easier to what sell. What works, yeah. 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 We're just too close to the art. We love it all. And if, if My we're expression. Yeah, and if we're on the harder end of that, we want the darker songs, right? But at that part we weren't experts. So, you know, for me, I knew that. I knew my limitations. Okay, I'm the artist, but I'm not the expert at picking what's going to sell. See, that's but you're smart for that because a lot of artists will fight against that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, fortunately, they picked the fucking winner. I was like, whoop. Okay, I'm not picking any songs. Fuck that. <laughs> and that's what I thought to myself right after that. When they picked that winner right there. And don't I was, ever yeah. ask me right. again. Don't ever ask <laughs> me again. Do you? Okay, I see. You, you fucking you. tell me. <laughs> that's smart. The only one I fought for was Green Thumb. That was the only song that I I didn't like and take any any suggestion by them because I was like, no, 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 no. This I feel a certain way about this one. I'm gonna go with this. Because most of the time, you know, they let us do us anyway. But it was like if they had a strong suggestion, they would make it and they were trying to get me to change that one, and that was the one I didn't change. Oh yeah. Had I changed it. This show ain't happening. I have a, for real. Uh, n- have, n- neither are the, the dispensaries. None of it. Maybe a dumb question. B. Did the character come first, or did the song come first? Character came first. Yeah. Okay. It was a it was an um, interlude, or not an interlude, but a, a sketch we had written while we were doing the Soul Assassin show. We were doing the radio show up at the Beat mm-hmm. with Michelle S. Yep. Julio G was was with us for a short time, but he helped us get started, and. Uh, you know that that the sketch gave way to the idea of of the song, and then we took the sketch and put it on the album with the song. So the sketch was was first. So that's where the idea came from. Nice, yeah. Funny how shit like this happens. That's how I was birthed. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Word it up. Came man. up with the intro. You started off with the song "Hello, My Name." That's how you set that shit off. Hey okay. man, um, I gotta say. I'm looking forward to seeing y'all rip shit because, like, I used to go to a lot of your shows. Yeah. When we when we weren't playing together, I mean, obviously we went on tours and we we've played, you know, various gigs back in the day. But like, actually, like going to your shows, I mean, y'all always brought this crazy ass energy. You know what I mean? Like, delivering the verses and moving, like not just you know standing there and shit. You know, like actually given like performances man that's what i always loved about y'all man that's for us that's like the funnest thing man i know q-tip got this story when he was like every time we see him he talking about y'all was like yo b y'all y'all was on stage y'all came on and the mic and the the mic cords was tangled up and y'all said hold up hold up and you, you just like untangled the cords like for some reason in his mind like the fact that we just t- stopped the music and just was untangling the chords. It was like that, yo, he never forgot about that. Yeah, shit. man. That shit was crazy. It's impressions you guys leave, you know what I mean? And it, and that's that's all we could hope for as artists. Like when we go up on stage and we do what we do, and we, and we do it at the highest level of our ability that we're leaving an impression. Yeah. Yeah. And I think y'all have managed to do that all the time. Man, my my biggest influence is James Brown, man. Oh, mm. one of the greatest. That, that's that's I I feel like that's where a lot of it comes from, man. Just like growing up in an era where, you know, it was like you got James Brown, you know, Prince, whoever, like Earth, Wind and Fire, yes, uh, Parliament, all of that show, showmanship, mm-hmm. every is everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it and it pays off, man. You know. Uh, People come up to you after the show. It's like, man, that was. We getting the word transformative now. Yeah, <laughs> like, all right. and that's that's awesome because I mean, you know, y'all have done nothing but get gotten better, and that's and that's uh that's the beautiful thing, man. You know, where other motherfuckers kind of 
they they sort of let go and slow down when you see a hip hop group coming from the time that we come from and they're like killing it yeah yeah it's it's a great experience i mean you definitely leave a mark etched in their minds for a very long time that they, they will come see you again based on how how hard you kicked them in the ass that night man yeah. I mean, when I got to see you guys at what was it, the LA Live spot last year at the in, like December, and it was Alcoholics, yep. Souls of Mischief, and you guys. Yep. Like there was something so. I mean, I understand the term transformative, absolutely, because I walked out of there feeling <clears throat> like I had just gotten high off the best shit in the world. <laughs> and you, you did, know, and I did, and like I came back, and like I was texting the homies, like, "Yo, everyone fucking killed it!" Like, yeah, like it was just like, and then you know when you see. Your favorite, your favorite, you know, bands and acts on stage doing your favorite songs. You have you lose yourself, and you take pride in it for for them and Hell with them. Yeah, that like, dude. That's my group. That's how you represent. You know what I'm saying? Going word for word, and you, you start, guys are on stage performing. Man, that's just the, that's one of the best feelings in the world. You start comparing them to everybody. Everybody else supposedly likes. Oh man, these motherfuckers can't do what these guys yep. do. Hey, you think it's because of COVID? Like. People are coming out to shows because I feel like shows are just lit right now in yeah. general. Like, yeah, I, I think they still bringing people out because you know for that time people are still making up for shit they didn't do. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and or shit they couldn't do, and people that weren't doing shit before COVID in the first place, they now have had like a shock. Like, fuck, I need to live life because. I mean, we were fucking shut down for that time. Yeah. And it's like, it's like a different fucking thing. Like, yeah. you, you sort of take shit for granted till something like that happens. And so you're seeing more people come out to shows because they're like, fuck, I don't want to waste another minute. I was stuck before Stuckin this. Out. Then I got really stuck. I need to go live some fucking life. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's beautiful to see that people, like, you know, come into the shows. And even if it's their first time or maybe, you know, they hadn't come in a long time, just the fact that they're willing to now go experience it because you know i'm not gonna live life hiding you know what i'm saying and to what you said lip about with COVID and those type of things here on the show we get a lot of guests coming in and it's amazing how many of those guests have said kind of the same thing as you is that they use COVID and then that time off whether you know to get the act together and things like that so they almost turned the negative into a positive so i guess i i, I see what you're talking about yeah man yeah, I mean, a lot of people did that. I was know? I was doing verses. I was doing all features uh, during COVID. You were getting uh, busy. I was getting busy, yeah. They were sending me beats, and I was knocking them all down. Who, like, but that's the cool shit about doing music, right? Is yeah. Is that, you know, like, especially in these days. Back in the days, if, this, if, if that had happened in the early 90s, it would have all been fucked. Yeah. Except for the people that had their own studio, studio yeah. right? Oh, man. Um, but now, because of technology everybody's got the possibility of like recording shit on their phone if they had to. So you'd be able to get it off no matter what. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. You know what I mean? And uh, that's that's the lovely part about right now. Yeah, you know, you got to weed through a lot of bullshit, but right. you know, those that are inclined can actually get it off. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. And so like when you think about that you're stuck in the crib for how how long that went, if you really wanted to be creative, you could have. And yeah. people did. And they, you know, found something in themselves. And some people, you know, embraced reality. Like, maybe this ain't for me, too. Like, there was that yeah. as well. Like, people that flourished, you know, they saw, like, a, a potential in themselves. And, like, boom, they went to task. And then others, like, damn, I don't know. Maybe, like you said, maybe I should try another art. You use that time <laughs> to actually lay down stuff where if you were out on tour and doing your regular stuff, it probably wouldn't have happened. You, yeah, you, you so it was, gave you a chance. He's like forced to focus. Yeah. 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 Mm. Hey, props on the on the get em you did with uh with Computer J. Oh yeah, yeah. Shout out to Computer J. Hell yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, you're on the song Plow. Yeah, 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 that, yeah, 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 yeah. You like that shit. Woo. Cowboy theme. Yeah, dude. It's, yeah, man. So, like, I can't wait to hear the other stuff you've been dropping. Oh, man. man. Yeah, that was, I like that. I like that verse. Yeah. Saddle up with guns blazing. I shoot them up without aiming. It's dangerous. About to be some changes around this town. 
ain't big enough for the both of us. Ashes to ashes, dust to the dust, and God we trust. Yeah. 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 Well, hold up, though. Rhymes is tucked in a holster, meet in the back of the Ponderosa. By sundown, the gun sounds will ring out. Some shit, he said, because it was a cowboy thing. Yeah. So I just yeah. kept the cowboy thing going. Yeah. Western hip hop. Yeah. <laughs> Got them bars still bars. popping. Yeah. Hey, oh, boy, yeah. Bars, the bar stays open. Yeah. Got to. <laughs> Got to stay bar open. Bar stays man. open. Hey, man. It's, 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 um, it's great to see that, like, hip hop is still being made on a, on a high level like that. You know yeah. what I mean? Not not just rap music, because rap music to me is like, it's it's hip hop, but it's slightly different. It's like polished, the polished version, but like that raw shit is still out there. Like, you know what is crazy? It's like when we was doing this, I don't think anybody connected it to art, right? Because it was something we picked up in high school to get girls. It was just a natural part of our culture until later on we start meeting people and be like, you're a poet, you're right. You're really a artist. Telling you things you never thought you'd hear, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and, then, and then you realize, you like read about the lives of other artists and the things that they did, you know, whether it be for their art or how their art connects to their money, you'd be like, oh shit, that's me. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Like, 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 I didn't realize like the whole, the whole dynamic between pop and what's was considered like real art. Right. I did that kind of like always existed with jazz. Like, like right. jazz was the innovative thing, and then you always had pop music, and that they always kind of like it's had like, that weird relationship. Yeah, to where like the the innovative thing became pop and anyone who switched sides would be called a sellout and shit like you know right. shit like that right you know that's the I, when i learned that always existed i was like damn okay that's a big picture yeah you know and it's crazy how they, they you know how they use the labels like that in terms of pop popular art yeah right it used to be standards like the shit that like any any um marketable person could snap right into Right, like they all sing the same goddamn songs. Oh, the st- yeah, because yeah. it was the song that was like the thing. Like, yeah, it's, it's all about the song. Who can sing this song the best? Right, some shit. Like, there's so many artists that sing the same song. Yeah, that's a good tongue twister right there. Say that fast five fucking times. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, <laughs> being innovative and and doing shit outside that box. Yeah, that's when all the other labels start. Oh, right, think, like the right? indie labels. Yeah. Or yeah. just, you know, the labeling of music, period. Oh, got you, got you, got you. You know what I mean? Like when, you know, when Elvis starts doing their his shit, they don't know what to label it, and they start calling it rock and roll because it's not necessarily rhythm and blues. It's a little bit more aggressive. Yeah. And basically what he was taking was from, from what he was hearing in the blues and jazz clubs yeah. and, like, you know, recreating it. Yeah, and then you know, but they get, they had to give it a name because it didn't necessarily sound exactly the same as where he was getting it from. Mm. Where it did sound like in 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 the places where he was going, did sound more rhythmic and bluesish as opposed to rockish. I guess I don't know. It was something it's, new. Something they new. They didn't know what to call it. All they knew was yeah. like, man, this white dude is yeah. doing some shit. Yeah. And he was borrowing it for sure, but they didn't know what to fucking call it because, you know, it definitely wasn't like the 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 normal shit that other artists in his lane were doing. Man, I tripped out when I made the connection between like, because, you know, I was I grew up in the 80s, early 80s, so. My first concert was Ozzy Osbourne. Oh shit! I used to fuck with it. I used to, yeah, same here. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. And so, but but you know Led Zeppelin and all of that. But uh, to to make the connection between that and blues, yeah, I was like, oh shit. Yeah. I love making. I love like making connections like that. Like, yeah, it's you know, a trip. Yeah, it's a trip when you listen to a lot of those old school songs, like by Zeppelin and and a lot of those old school '60s rock bands that kind of followed zeppelin and sabbath and and that they were all influenced by a lot of blue shit like muddy waters and and uh and uh what's the other home um 
uh, Howlin' Wolf, yeah. Willie mm-hmm. Dixon, yeah, John Lee Hooker. Yeah, Johnny Lee yeah. Hooker. And you start hearing the songs that, you know, like when you discover it, you hear the songs that they've got, they got the idea from, and you're like, oh shit. Yeah. Oh, it's exactly. mind blowing. Yeah. It is. Like, especially the blues shit. Yeah. And back then, you know, people would take a riff that they heard from something else and add a little something, and it was their riff now. And that's yeah. flattering. You know, yeah. it's not, you know, so many people are always on that, oh, you're biting my shit. Right. But, no. that, I mean, it is sincerely flattery. I mean, if if somebody has, if you've touched a, a mind and a soul artistically like that in somebody, I mean, you should take that as, like, that's the ultimate compliment. Well, unless they bite your shit completely. Outright, yes. Yes, uh, yeah, then, outright. then it's not so flattering. Right. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Right. Like, I know for a time... I think that Chuck Berry was trying to sue the Beach Boys because their whole uh, surf sound was based off of of like his get down. Yeah. If wow. you listen to early Chuck Berry, that guitar, the way it's swinging there, and then you hear some of the Beach Boys shit, you're like, oh shit. Yeah. The Beach Boys eventually do their own sound and they, they become, you know, their own shit. But initially when they were Early in the game, yeah, they were very much inspired by like Chuck Berry. And in all fairness, back then in 1950s rock, I think they played about like three chords. You know what I mean? It was pretty. <laughs> it was pretty basic. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Some um, of it. Yeah. So that being said, yeah, some's gonna sound alike and that kind of thing. But man, Chuck Berry, that that's the dude right there. Yeah. Well, you know, that's who people attribute to be calling the king of rock and roll. Him or Little Richard. Little Richard. Yeah. I can see Richard. that. Yeah. Them two guys were like up there up front. Yeah. There's that one woman though. I I can't. I don't know her name, but they they. You probably know. Oh, Rosetta. Is that uh, her name? Um, it's a video of this one woman. They calling her the queen. Oh, of that's rock. right. Yeah, She's yeah. Going I, in. What's like, her oh, name? Uh, oh, I am so stoned right now that I yeah. can't remember. I seen You're her on stoned like Rosetta, son. I, yeah. Bam. <laughs> uh-huh. All that. Um, yeah, fuck, what's her name? I, I, I know who you're talking about. I can't remember the name, but, but she's, a, she's an unsung hero. Unsung yes, absolutely. hero. Absolutely. She used to be like swinging it when she, yeah. when she was playing. She Rocking was, you know, and rolling. Yeah. Yeah. Was, <laughs> yeah. Damn it. Yeah, man. There's so many fucking great artists that nobody really talks about and gives the flowers to. Is it Thorpe? That, that they should. Yeah. They're like the foundations of, of, uh, the first rock and roll songs and mm-hmm. shit. Oh yeah, but that's what's dope about DJs because the DJ, like, shout out to like, first person come to mind is Dame Funk. Yeah, you know, he had that whole club. Uh, I think it was called Funkmosphere. Yep. Yeah. And you know, I knew about, you know, I knew about uh, Shalimar. Yeah. You know, I knew I knew about Shalimar, but I didn't know about all the other groups from that era that was making some, you know, some real good funk records. And you go to that club and it's like, it's like, yeah. damn, it wasn't just them. It was, it was this whole, this whole, com- you know, this whole world of, of, but then that's kind of like, you know, what hip hop is about. Somebody rediscovering a world, of, you know, that you never would have known existed. Q-tip finding all of those samples. Yeah. From artists that you would have never heard of, you know? Yep. Yeah. It's you know that's that that's the cool part about hip hop is it that that no one even thought mm-hmm. is it like all these samples you need lighter yeah all these samples that that people have used where you know like students of the game they want to know where that shit came from and then they like stumble onto it and it's like oh shit this is that song that this is from I never knew that this was the artist that originally did the song and they're sort of getting the education yeah of of the foundation of any given song you know what I mean like um for instance Pedro out there right one of our uh yep. photographer videographer uh guys yep. um like he's a younger dude yep and he'll hear like a hip hop song or or um you know he likes a lot of the newer artists like Kodak or something like that yeah, you know right. that generation yeah. of shit he likes old school shit too. Yep. But like, you know, he listens to a lot of the younger shit. And he'll hear a song and then he'll hear where it got sampled from and it's like a fucking mind blow to him. Yeah. You know I mean, like, <laughs> oh shit, yeah. this is where they got it from. Damn. And then he starts liking that song, you know, and like wanting to hear that song stand alone. Yeah. 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 And yeah. then like, you know, eventually that's there's so many people like that that end up getting the back catalog. 
because they got educated about this song through yeah. a hip hop song, yeah, yeah, or a rap song, whatever you know what I mean, and and. It did that for James Brown. Yeah, mm -hmm. it sold him a lot of back catalog because people were like, "Oh shit, that's James Brown they used." Mm -hmm. Or someone might have said, "Oh, you don't know what that, that that's a James Brown song," and someone might go and study that, or it could be Parliament Funkadelic or George Clinton. Oh yeah, and you know they all reap the benefits of the back catalog sales from people like doing the knowledge on what this song was created from in terms of sampling. Hell yeah. You don't have that shit as much anymore, so there's less education. Yeah. We just had that conversation be about the number one song in the country right now, the big, the big diss record on Drake, that the original oh, song yeah. had come from Rodney O and Joe Cooley. Oh, yes. yeah, yeah. So you're talking about, like, I was talking to Rodney, and his sales on the original now have just, that like... That catalog lit up, son. Skyrocketed oh, man. because of, of the, the song being just released now. Like, yeah. they want to know where that where that came from. Yeah. Hey, yeah, Kendrick, man. Kendrick, go at him with the insane in the brain, dog. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You ever want to diss somebody but not too bad? Simple that passing me by. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a call. Yeah, man, we, we, we put our bid, we put our bids in, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> come on. That'd be crazy for a commercial and shit, <laughs> wouldn't it? Oh my Cause, god! Because you could, you did somebody talking about you. You gonna be running away? Yeah. Sample my shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, shout out to Joe. I don't, I don't know if you remember Joe. Yeah. Sam, first I got sampled a lot of uh, Maya. Yeah. Maya sampled our shit. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I played the Joe uh, version on Power back when I was DJing there. Yeah, I used to I shit wasn't bad. No, it wasn't bad. I shit wasn't bad. He set that shit off. Too. Did it trip you out? Like, because I know, like, when, when we were coming up and we were, like, you know, using the samples from other artists, we weren't thinking about if one day they're going to be using our shit. Like, it tripped me out the first time I heard Red Meth, or I mean, uh, Red used Time for Some Action. I was like, oh, oh yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. how did it feel when y'all, y'all, Heard y'all shit like that. Man, that shit was, uh, that shit, you know, back then it was almost like the news of it. Like, they always, it was always something like, yo, you about to go on Arsenio Hall. What? Yeah. You know? And then so, like, it was always, like, good news. I feel, I feel like it was always good news. With the Joe shit, it was kind of like, yeah, that shit was crazy. Like, damn, it's, it's to that level on some yeah. R&B radio yeah, that took it to a different place. Yeah, yeah. But it's just, you know, it kind of like solidifies, you know, what what, yeah. what you knew, what you already knew. It's like, yeah, I knew this shit was funky. Oh, yeah, man. Mm -hmm. I got to tell y'all, um, and, and the thing is, is y'all gave every aspect of it, like, a fucking great look. Like, so what y'all recorded, dope shit, the interactions between the two. All y'all and, and the production, yeah, dope. The 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 show, I mean, you guys are all showmen, performance like fucking, you know, masters and shit. And then the visuals, yeah, you know, like the videos were always like fucking something dope. Like that, it it went with the music, you know, as videos should, right? Because sometimes not all videos fit to the songs but like y'all shit just matched up perfectly and always a great visual and and salute to our our brother block because y'all he hit y'all he hit y'all with a good bro. one yes i love block man yeah block yeah block did running and then he did the album cover yeah which was a he did the album cover for um lab cab in california yeah. which was a photo yeah but, uh, yeah yeah, you guys are all dressed up, right? Like well, in it, suits. Yeah, and, yeah, it was it was uh you know the reverse slavery. We yeah. was the slave masters. Right. Back in the nineties, hey, we was we was come on, man. That's Hell right. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Shout out to Block. Yeah, man. For for uh, pass me by that shit was crazy because it was a lot of people. I remember. Uh, shout out to Gary F. Gray. Gary F. Gray. He was at the crib. He was like, "Yo, I got this vision for you," and it was like you said. It's like sometimes you don't see the vision and so we didn't end up going with him because you know you know somebody else came and we kind of sh like showed us photos like this is what it's gonna look like this but then uh i seen gary f gray later on after he had you know gone on and did major major shit he was like i wasn't i wouldn't have thought of that <laughs> props to y'all yeah 
Like, hey, sometimes it's a, it happens how it happens. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah. And y'all, y'all got one in that one. It maybe it wasn't by Gary, but fuck. Yeah, yeah. Dude. It's something iconic. No, the yeah. homie. Uh, I actually went to high school with uh, Sanji. That's who directed uh, "Pass Me By," and uh, I think I think we were sold on the upside down shit. Yeah, it was like yeah, no, nah, yeah, that put, shit was hard. I'm gonna put you on a, a crane and you're gonna be upside down. And I was like, yeah, no, nah, no, nah, that was sold. Yeah, hell yeah, and uh, the video you. Th- I think is one of the most revolutionary hip hop videos is like the drop video you did. <laughs> the drop video. Yeah, yeah. Like, Sick. I mean, so, I mean. Sick. How, I mean, because I still, I'm in awe every time I see it when it comes on something, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, it's because, like, the coordination you guys did to, you guys had to learn it backwards, right? We had to learn the, the words backwards. Yeah. Right. So we listened to the words in reverse. And we had to learn the words backwards. That's crazy. And then the, <laughs> the sequence of the video, our actions were recorded in reverse. Yeah, and then played forward. Yeah, and then so played. that it no, it was reversed. Oh, it was, so oh, it was recorded. We, it, we moved. Oh, I see what you backwards. said. Yes, yeah. you moved it backwards. Took, it took me all this time to be able to explain this. So yeah, it whoa. Took, yeah, so. yeah. This is one of the <laughs> dopest <laughs> fucking hip hop. So we're moving here. backwards. And then he reversed that. Yeah. So it looks like we're moving forward. Yeah. And that's downtown. That's the Beastie Boys. Yeah. Mike D. Yeah. Yeah. Spike Jones directed it, right? Spike Jones. Shout out to Spike. He yeah. did an incredible job, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's, he's, what city was that in right there? That was LA. Downtown. That was, LA? Yeah. That, was a, that was Broadway. And that's crazy because it looks like that could be New York. Like yeah. in Harlem somewhere. I thought it was San Francisco for a minute. Yeah, yeah. That's downtown. Yo, yo. Yeah, man. I'll say this, man. Video directors back in this time were so creative. Yeah. That, that, like, they, there were some bad motherfuckers made in this time. Shady Perez was one of them, uh, based uh, out of New York. He did Kill a Man. Um, Diane Martin. Diane Martin. Did she ever do any of your videos? I don't think we got to work with, with her. We got to work with Mick G for a minute. He did Illusions and uh, something else I can't remember. I think it's, uh, fuck, I can't remember the other song. But yeah, with Illusions, he had me standing on this pillar and there was no safety. <laughs> there was no safety <laughs> fucking, you know, bag or whatever. To, if, if I had fallen over, I was a trip to the hospital. I'll son. catch you, B. Uh, <laughs> I'll catch you. <laughs> Bro, got you. Oh, got man, you. getting up on this thing with the ladder was crazy, how tall, though. How tall was the pillar? It was uh, probably as high as these curtains, a little bit higher. Okay. So that would have been good if you <laughs> Yeah, if I had fallen, yeah. So when you say a pillar, that's like yeah, in like, diameter, probably like yeah, a foot. It was about maybe just just wide enough for me to stand on just long enough so that both my front and back so you couldn't have took no step yeah it was one wrong step i wasn't supposed to take a step i wasn't supposed to move i was just supposed to stand there do the verse while he's getting it up you know like get, getting the shot up up the pillar like and i was like man and now you know i had previously well i had just gotten over my fear of heights before this video, but like I was still very skeptical, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So, <laughs> damn, yeah, that was I, the universe, bro. Like, why that shit? It, yeah, God was playing some tricks <laughs> on me for sure. Um, the, the scariest part was not just standing there; it was like coming down, trying to get back on that ladder, like coming down, because there's nothing to hold on to. You have to sort of, it's man no i don't even damn man for no. well, art it's though like, like for like, art yeah yeah for art i would have been splattered on that floor like some <laughs> art way i would have <laughs> fell over jesus hey look if you haven't take uh taken time to smash that like it go ahead and smash it subscribe to the channel crack the all notification bell get down with the content we be dropping it's the dr green thumb show we're gonna be on the road pretty soon as you know we've been talking about it here um uh, you gotta check us out and um you know we invite all of you to do so and uh the mix show is after this show you know that celos is gonna be in the mix exclusively on twitch today b underscore real tv where you catch the video mix celos and myself we're gonna pop it off so uh you know check in with us
All right. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't really have any information for you here today, but um, yeah. sometimes that's a good thing. Excellent. No news is good news. Sometimes no news is good news. No good news is good news. I mean, when you think about all this shit happening to these <laughs> days, man, <laughs> it's fucking crazy. I don't want to know what today, what day it is today, Donut I don't Day. Know. Uh, donut Day. The beauty According of being to- on tour when you don't really, you just don't don't really like remember what day it is. Well, what it is, it's it's leading up to this tour. I mean, you guys as artists, me and management. I mean, it's it's just the eleventh hour. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, if it ain't gonna get done by like today and tomorrow, it ain't gonna get done. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I, I do want to say salute to Woody and uh, the squad. We just did. Their uh, 10 year anniversary the other day at the Belasco. Yeah. And it was a good show, man. Salute to everybody that came out, had a good time. It was a sold out show. And uh, that was our first show in like three months. Yeah. And you realistically, could, you couldn't tell. I mean, no. it was vicious. It, it, it was the first one in three months because um, we had finished the Ice Cube tour and shit, uh, oh, shit, or the thing we did with Cube in uh, Europe. And I had to do a hernia surgery right after that tour. So I was down for eight weeks. And then the next month we were just, you know, the month after that, we were like just off. So I got lucky enough to heal up, but I had to get on my cardio game. Yeah. Like immediately, like right when my eight weeks was up, I had to jump on it. And fortunately I caught it right on time. So, you know, I should be ready. Lips, what what do you do to get like, ready mentally physically clothes everything like what what goes on in your mind like leaving for tour tomorrow i stay i try to stay ready um but for clothes oh man for clothes it's like nothing that's the hard one yeah no but like i go to europe and they like where's your bags i was like i don't have none <laughs> hey. Like I'll get flagged for that. Like they, they're like, cause they'll be like looking suspicious. Like yeah. here's a guy going to Europe for eight weeks. Yeah. And he's got a we little ass like bag. Oh, hold on. Yeah. So you're bringing like two pairs of boxer shorts? What's going on here? I usually I I figure it out when I get there. I huh? be yeah. I like I hop on the bus and then cause we got a bus this time. So yeah, yeah. So, you yeah. Know. I hit up targets all over the world and just just grab it here and there when I get there. That's hey. You know what? I learned how to travel light. And it Travel took light. It, yeah. it took me about a good, <laughs> I'm gonna say, 15, 16 years. You know, cause like in the early days with rappers, you know, we all want we want to look fucking fresh every fucking day. So we're yeah. packing like, okay, we're gonna be gone for 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 four weeks. I need to have a shirt for every day. Oh, I gotta yeah. have like X amount of pants. I gotta have X amount of shoes. Sort of like Lord packs today. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I learned how to pack light, though, like saying, okay, yeah. well, if I bring enough shirts, cool. As long as whatever we got to wear on stage is different than what I'm packing in this fucking bag over here, I could pack light, and that stage shit is for the stage, and boom, that's it. So I learned how to pack light instead of having this crazy-ass huge, you know, two, three fucking bags of shit. I mean, I, I can't tell you the last time I had to check something in. See like, that's wow. but I I may be a little extreme because when I look at all the pictures <laughs> of the shows, like I go on Instagram, you see all the photos, I be wearing the same shit sometimes. <laughs> that's all right. I'm extreme. That's with called this shit. the uniform. That's called the uniform. Uniform. Because yeah, every every icon. If you want to be an icon, you gotta have a a look. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, but your look is your own. As long as it, you ain't looking like everybody else. Exactly. Hey, you know Bo Diddley. And I, I don't know if B.B. King did this, but I know there was two art, artists that used to do this back in the day, um, blues artists, where <clears throat> they wouldn't show up with shit, right? Um, all they had was their sheet music. They didn't. He didn't have a band with him. It's like, boom, you're going to find the players for me. They're going to play this music, boom. And when he would get to the city, they'd be taking him shopping to buy his get-up for that night and a guitar. Damn. Wow. Damn. That's how that's how he came. It's like he was doing it like that. I ain't traveling with shit. Yeah. I'm gonna get it while I'm there and then <laughs> I'm out. I mean, yeah, I out. like that. I like that. that. I don't know when I started doing that, but yeah. It, that's a method that works because you travel light. You don't gotta worry about all this shit. Well, you you broke me of that habit. I was I was guilty of it too, picking out outfits and all that. And B finally just said, Hey, dude, 
uh, you're doing too much. You know? After, so, after yeah. the seventh year. Yeah, you ain't. Yeah, after the seventh year, because it's like you know you you're packing like you're going to a club every night. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, man, you're going to be on a bus traveling and then you got a show, man. You ain't going to be out stunting every night. I mean, if you're a fashionista, this is the thing that haunts you. Yeah. That's why Lord is so <laughs> haunted. If you're watching Lord, that's why you're fucking haunted. He, he, he got to stay fresh. He, yeah, he got to keep oh. up with the freshness. Hey, <laughs> listen, my dude, I don't know how many shoes he packs for a tour. I'm going to say eight pairs. Now... That might be an exaggeration, but yeah. Trace, does that sound like an exaggeration? It really doesn't because he's he will admit to you that he gets what is known as packing anxiety. Right. Where I got to pack everything. He gets overwhelmed by everything there, and he's trying to fit everything in the suitcase. And it's just like, uh, how are you going to get, like B says, why do you need 10 pairs of tennis shoes for a four-week tour? It's you seven know, days the, out of the week. <laughs> yeah. Rotate. Yeah, yeah. Rotate some shit. You I know, think, I think seven shoes is like if, if that's your thing, though. Like if you got to stay fresh, I think seven, seven is is seven. Yeah. At least for every day. I'm Once bringing day. I'm bringing three pairs lip. Oh I'm, yeah, I'm bringing the ones I'm walking around in, the boots in case it rains, and the workout shoes. That's it. Yeah, I ain't trying to bring half my closet to match up, dog. Like I'll save the match game for home. Like out there, you know, like. We Keep don't it. need to be dripping this hard, you know. Steve what I'm Jobs, I, I, I do. Steve the, Jobs, I do the Steve Jobs thing. Oh yeah, look when when I was when I was touring with Profits, right? Um, Morello, uh, Timmy, and and uh, Brad, they wasn't wearing all this different shit from day. They had the same ass shit throughout the week. They might have a different shirt for the next week, and a different shirt for the, like very minimalistic. And when I saw their bags and how light they were, I'm like, "Fuck! How, what have I been doing?" What it translates to is you, be, <laughs> you become very efficient when you travel like that. You know yeah. what I mean? Efficiency yeah. is, you know, yeah. You can get over, like I say, overwhelmed. And by then it. if you pack light, and this happens in hip hop, you you could definitely testify to this that sometimes you go to cities and motherfuckers just want to hand you. Free T-shirts, black ones. Every time, most most every time. time. So now you got room for this shit on top. You know, instead of having like, oh my god, I gotta manage this fucking bag, and then, okay. damn, I just got five new shirts from the last five cities. Fuck, our boy Lord, he <laughs> he has to get another suitcase because <laughs> all the crap he picked up on the way of the tour: t-shirts, shoes, hats. Wow. Yeah, he's coming home with more gear. That's than the accumulator, left. dog. <laughs> <laughs> that's an accumulator dog sometimes i'll like i'll I, I can't even take the free shit anymore i'm like uh, i got enough black shirts i got like uh 350 black shirts oh, man. at the all, crib all with different all with different. All with a different crew on it. <laughs> yeah it's like man i'm cool dude i used to when i was on the road i used to always like go record shopping and end up filling that junk punk up with just nothing but records and everyone was like how are you gonna get that home and i was like that's a good idea. Yeah. Why am I going to get it home? How are you going to get it home? <laughs> yeah. I never thought of that. Yeah. And then I was like, damn. Then I had ship to start. It. Yeah, I had to start shipping. Oh, man. Fun times. Damn. That's a thing. Do you still t uh, take those? Because they used to have those steel anvil mm -hmm. crates and shit like that. Yeah. I have one of those still, I think. Yeah, those are the ones. If I'm traveling, hell yeah. But you, it, you still do vinyl. Like, vinyl came back and people are doing vinyl again. Like, yo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, people are doing vinyl sets here and there for sure. Yeah, it's yeah. great. Is you know, because records are made to be played. You know what I mean? I think that's you if know, you got them. If you got them, you if know you what got I mean? them, spin them. And I'm still a fan, so I still I still love getting certain things on vinyl. As soon as it comes, out, I'm like, oh, I got to get it. You know? There's that nostalgic feel to it too when oh. you're when you're hearing it come off the original records, and you know, it's it's like, oh yeah, this is it right here. This yeah. is you know. And vinyl, and vinyl's coming back these days, you know. Yeah. Well, it's a, it really, it never went out. It's just the volume of it lessened because, you know, the record companies wanted to force feed you those mini discs and compact discs. Yeah. And then it just disappeared. Then it disappeared. The streams. Yeah. yeah. Like, no, nothing physical. But, yeah, it's all coming back, even CDs. Yeah. Um, shit, they sell records. I well, mean, record players everywhere yeah. now. Well, you yeah. know, because... Fans of music want something that they could hold. 
Yeah. Right before, like, and, and I've said this for a few shows that, like, you know, back in the day, you could go buy that compact disc or vinyl, and it's something tangible. Like, the, the fan bought it. They own it. It's theirs in a different way than a stream. Like, that's just something that's in my device. I can't pull it out. I can't show it to somebody. I can't get it signed. You know, I don't actually own it. It's a license. Mm. Right? It, it might be in your device, but, like... It's a, it's a thought. Here, can, yeah. can, 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 I, can I put my device on, on the album, and can you sign that? Right. Like, no. And, and yes. like you guys see as a, as a DJ and a collector, yeah. it's nice to have literally your you know, your vinyl collection, you know yeah. what I mean? It's something that you're proud of, you know, yeah. it's a it's a reflection of who you are and your trials and tribulations of life, you know, all these albums and stuff where it's a little insensitive when it's just on a phone, you know well, what I mean? Well, there's, yeah. a di- you know, it's a different moment you could create. Like if you go to, to that artist's show and like if they're doing a meet and greet or you happen to catch them coming outside and getting it signed. You can't sign a download, man. <laughs> you can't do it. I mean, yeah, I mean, one of the best things is I think that what people re- in the digital age really miss with things not being, you know, or them not being on the vinyl so much until later is that when you get that record and it's maybe a gatefold vinyl, like, and so you get to see the album artwork and you get to read the credits and the lyrics. Yeah. And, credits, yeah. And, and you like, get to see where they recorded the shit. Yeah. Yep. You know what I mean? And so you could put on the record and playing. You just, I used to just sit there and just read everything and read along with the lyrics and then go, oh, okay, where is this? You know, and then. That's the other part of the digital. It doesn't give you the information on who contributed on making that a great album because it yeah. wasn't just the artist on there. Yes. They're, you know, one of the significant points, obviously, you know, as we are doing the music, but all the other people it took to make this Mm -hmm. thing, you know what I mean? Like, they got totally asked out. Yeah. Like, because you give them writer's credit, you were expected to see that shit on a physical copy, yet physical copies don't exist anymore, and they don't necessarily on the streaming surfaces go out of their way to, like, give you every single goddamn credit. I mean, some do. Some are are decent enough with that shit, but you know, again, there's nothing like seeing it on the physical copy. I always yeah. contributed like with an artist with their album was like an athlete with their uh, with their baseball card. That was mm, a reflection right. of who they were. Yeah. If you wanted an autograph, you would bring that album to the artist to be signed. Same way as an athlete with a baseball card. Absolutely. So I always felt that you know. When the digital music came, it, like wow, they got their baseball cards pulled from them. You know what I mean? That was yeah. kind of, that was kind of their their yeah. autograph platform. You know? Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. The other the other part that was dope um, about the nature of uh, of a physical copy is the shout outs that people used to give. Shout out, man. Shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. People used to like love seeing the shout outs, like who they who that crew was down with. Yeah, you know what I mean, like, Cause, yeah, cause, who, like. When I think of that, I think of like Skeff Anthem. Is yeah. that his, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right, excuse yep. me. But it's like names like that. You're just like, yo, Q Tip said that. Who who is this? Yeah, who the fuck is that? And then you, you wanted read. to know. Yeah. yeah. You see his credit on the like on the tribe album or you know what I mean? You're like he did the beat for what, everything is fair? That's crazy, is you have to have an album from the nineties, a physical album to see any of that type of shit exist. Or or even from the late eighties, because you know, there was a couple groups doing that shit. And and you know the yeah. art of it as well too because the art everything on that cover meant something. The space was you know highly you know needed to be right you know in order to have right. the right things on it because you wanted to do it you know so it was it's just amazing. Like, Come on, the, like the layout. Yeah, the layout. Yeah. There you yeah. go. That's yeah. what I meant. Yeah. That's when photographers used to have to really work. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. They used to have to work. Um. But uh, salute to the game, man. Uh, man. You know, everybody watching, once again, make sure you check out that mix show after this. And uh, right about now, we're going to get into submissions. What? Oh, shit. 
think the old man was touching the computer there. Don't <laughs> yeah. know what happened. We we have a we have a, a spirit in the building. Oh Lip. shit! Uh, since we got here, we've been here about ten years. Okay, and we've all uh, have encountered um, some things here. We, and sometimes, you know, he fucks with the broadcast. So mm. um, must be that uh, he's he's in need of some appeasement of some sort, which yeah. I will attend to, old man. Hey. He's like, does he direct or like he's maybe he used to do production? He used to own this building. So, you know, um, at least we think. Right. The, you know, he, he was the the the. Builder and owner of the building. He was in construction. So he, he got a little. He got a little say so. He's got a little say so and a little attachment. Mm. And once in a while, he'll uh, he'll he'll uh, do something to let us know he's in the building. Yeah, let, let it yeah. be known then. And I think that was his little his little way little of saying, rub. "Hey guys, I'm oh. here. Pour me a drink. We'll pour you a drink in a minute, Mike." Oh man. How you doing? I was gonna say. <laughs> let, wait, let me ask you that, Lip. Though, do you believe in the paranormal? Have you ever um, experienced it in any way? Um, I, like whether it's energies, ghosts, UFOs, any of it. I will say, for a long period of time, I thought somebody was against me as far as like technology. Right. Like I remember a time where none of my technology was working was working yeah and then mm. like it would always be it got to the point where i knew it wasn't gonna work i knew when i put in this passcode something's gonna happen right or something's not gonna happen and then sure enough it was just like it was constantly failing at that time yeah yeah yeah, yeah that was fucked up like, <laughs> yeah. so, you, so you contribute that to, to possibly a paranormal it messing felt with you like something from another realm was this was this happening <laughs> was this happening in the same location every time or or different places yeah di like different shit just huh. like you know something with my cell phone usually like logging in or paying for something it was always fucking with you always fucking with me huh. And to the point where I I was I was like I know this ain't gonna work I'm gonna have to do this five times before it works. Yeah. So yeah, that it felt like some paranormal shit. Yeah. <laughs> hey man, it, those uh, the energies are real, man. Yeah, right. yeah. That's no doubt. All right. I was gonna say, B, did you watch UFC 300 this past weekend? I watched most of it except for the last. Um, Three fights. I was gonna say our boy Bobby Green. He destroyed Jim Miller. Yeah. Ooh. Salute to the king. Damn. That looked like it hurt. Yeah. <laughs> Salute to King Green. That's gonna leave a mark. Damn. That's I think. Hey, that's Doctor Green Fist right there. That's Doctor Green Fist <laughs> for sure. I think. Uh, I think he just called out Patty Bem Pemberton after this fight. He's letting Patty know I'm coming at you, son. Look at that nose. Bring him. Damn. Oh, we got a bleeder. Yeah, Green, he be, he be putting it down. Boy. I believe Miller broke his hand and his nose this fight. Oh, hey, the crazy fight was the bad motherfucker fight. The baddest motherfucker fight with... Uh, with uh, That sounded like some shit with no gloves. No, no, it's, it's, it's a UFC fight. Okay. But it's for a title they made up that's not really like a world title, it's, but it's like the baddest motherfucker title. Like, like there's someone who's got like... A fuckload of respect because they'd be throwing down and uh are the rules any different no no okay. same and uh this guy named uh Gaethje and who was the other homie um why am i forgetting because he's a fucking legend could you look at him was it uh holloway holloway there you go max holloway and uh justin Gaethje. and like they were having a fight but holloway was winning most of the time on points and like you know damage and all that stuff he broke um Gaethje's nose with the back sort of spinning kick right you see his heel sort of just Damn. like nick the top, top of the nose and homie was fucked after that but he Ooh. kept fighting because this dude's got heart and he's Hell a bad yeah. motherfucker a bad himself. Motherfucker. and so <laughs> in the last i'm gonna say 15 20 seconds max holloway says let's get in the middle and throw it Come right, on. <laughs> so they start throwing down, boy, and mm. Max cracks him with the with I I, I it, what it looked like a a left hook, but it could have been a, I mean a, a right hook or a or an overhand right. I like 
it, it was hard to tell because it happened so fast, but he put the lights out on Gaethje. Lights out with, with two one, seconds. Yeah, with a- two seconds left <laughs> on the fucking clock. But Damn. you're talking about the dude that already had his nose broke. Yeah, the dude who got his nose who had his nose broke. He got Shh. knocked out. Damn. It, with two seconds left to go in the last oh, round. Here it goes right here. Look. He's telling them, let's do this middle shit right here. They're like, let's go, let's go. <laughs> oh. Man. Bang. Oh. oh. Bye bye. Overhand right. It was like, look the at the clock. Seven, six, five, oh, four, 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 three, four, 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 two. Bow. Bang. Oh. <laughs> Overhand right. Damn. Happened so fast. And he got fired. Right here. The here it goes. Here it goes right here. Uh, Bing. A little small, uh, quick one. It. Damn. Lights out. And, and that knockout right there won him a bonus of 300 grand. He, he got 300 racks that night. Fight of the night. Max yeah. Holloway said, I ain't done. Ooh. Whoa. Ooh. Yeah, his lights were out like, right there. He was done. Oh, he was asleep. Done out. And, and what's cool is Max backed up off him. He didn't try to do any more damage that he had to. That's, that's class right mm. there. Damn. <laughs> victory hey but victory. there was another one with uh with uh with what's how do you say say his fucking last name it's a brazilian dude against uh alex Parhe or something like that against jamal hill and uh that one was a cold knockout too homie kind of kicked him below the belt and as herb dean was coming to like you know separate him like to give him you know, to give him his couple minutes, he like waves him off. He goes, nah, nah. And homie like backs up and he just throws a solid fucking left hand to him. I think it was a left hand, but he boom, cracks him. And you see this dude's eyes light up as he's going down, dog. He was like knocked out with the surprise look on his face at the Damn. same time. Or he, the bell. Yeah, his Damn. bell was <laughs> fucking rough. Um, that was that was also some good shit. There was a lot of good fights. Yeah, it's a lot of good fights. It lived up to the to the what they were looking for. for three hundred, you 300. know, three hundred was dope. The 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 prelims were dope too. Shit, the prelims could have been headline fights themselves. And the ladies, man, they did their thing yeah, too. Ladies did their shout thing. out to the ladies too, man. They were throwing, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. Salute to the UFC, man. I could never oh, yeah. date one of those ladies. Never. Nah, they would whoop your <laughs> ass, uh, Trace. No. Where you been at? Yeah. Where you, been? you were supposed to be home hours ago, Trace. Baby, baby, please. <laughs> That's a whole different kind of baby, baby, yeah, please. Just, just don't hit me. Don't hit me. <laughs> you said you, said you weren't going to hit me. This is fucking takes one to the eye. Bow, lie to me again. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got uh, Angie up in here showing off some homemade birria tacos Ooh, made with some short hey. ribs. Okay. Tacos, uh, with doing? short ribs. Damn. Bring it. Let me ask you a question, B. Do you double your tortillas or single? Depends. Those are like street taco size. So would you double them or are you single? Well, when they're really juicy like this, you yeah. kind of have to double them up. If they're a little bit drier... Um, then you could single them up. Got to got to double up, hold the sauce. Yeah. And then I I found that the reason for the second the second shell is because all the stuff that falls from the first shell goes into the, the second shell. shell. Ooh, good idea. Yeah. I was just like, yeah, I can eat all of that with. <laughs> yeah, the only time you see the the single is if it's like drier. It doesn't have all the shit on. And it. like, that makes like, sense. like a fried shell, like you know. I always wondered if there was like a rule. That's about like that. a two, like when you get the groceries, you gotta have two bags. Two bags, yeah. So that shit ain't falling through. Yeah. Hold the sauce. Hold the sauce. <laughs> Bart's Barbecue is showing off some Wix pizza. I think this is in Kentucky. Hey, Wix. That looks pretty good. Uh. Did All you right. say barbecued pizza? Bart's barbecue. Oh, nice. oh he's oh he's at, he's he's having a slice of pizza. Oh, oh right on. Oh, Bart's barbecue there having. He a was slice in uh, Kentucky pizza. last week. That's right. All right, he gonna smoke yeah. that pizza, huh? So <laughs> put it pizza. in the smoker. Put it in the smoker. Smoke. And Cedric, all the way in Chicago, saying, "Guys, my wife saw a massive beer clearance at the local brewery and uh, or at the local it. grocery store. She <laughs> hooked it up. She yeah. saw the clearance and she cleared it." <laughs> Damn. We got all the APIs. The 7.5s. All that shit that'll get you faded. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's the thing about the IPAs, man. It will I mean, fade you out. 
What's what's what is it? Some what's what's, what's what is that? Alcohol content? Is yeah, it? alcohol content. What's the highest nine point? I think so. Some shit. Uh, racing goes up to sixteen. It goes up to sixteen. Damn. Damn. Oh my. That's why you want to just get there fast. You know, <laughs> yeah. just one and done. You want to run to the party and. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah. All right. And uh, Christian saying, uh, best combo ever. Got to watch the Death Tones and eat some Chinese food. Look at that. Hey, they, oh, kill- yeah. they killed it at Coachella, man. Yeah, they man. sure did. They sounded so goddamn good. Yeah, man. Yeah. They did that Smith cover. Because it's, it's hard when you watch a live stream and they don't got the sound, like, fucking dialed in. But, like, for the Death Tones, they definitely had it dialed in. That shit was tight. Yeah, man. They killed it. Yeah. I was going to say, Steftone likes this combo, too. Some Chinese food, good music. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Excellent. True that. I ain't against that. And Dean Jones, he's saying he didn't eat this because he's still on a diet, but he made breakfast for his son, all homemade sausage McMuffin. Oh. Right. Mm. Nothing like, you know, homemade. Yeah. You know what I mean? It. It's with love. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure Unless you were pissed off while you were doing it. Yeah. <laughs> then it's not so much love. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it, I gotta do this back <laughs> For real. It's a thick ass piece of sausage. That is thick. You got like a two. burger. <laughs> yeah. Like a burger. Shh. Well done. That's a hearty ass breakfast. <laughs> with sausage. Should be good for, to for lunch, too. I ain't gonna lie, that cheese is throwing me off, too, man. It, <laughs> you don't, that, you, that, you that ate look, down with the cheese? It looks, like, it looks like it's just hard as a rock. You know what I mean? Like it's been there for like a day. I don't know. Mm, it, like, down. It, doesn't look it looks like kind of cheese, melted. Though. I mean, I don't want to. I mean, made him for his son, so that was nice. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But he's uh, out in Australia. He doesn't have that fake American cheese. Uh, yeah, he doesn't okay. have the fake American now cheese. That you say that, Fulton. They just got cheese, doc. <laughs> it's right. just regular. Except that's uh, kangaroo sausage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sausage on the bottom. It's fucking koala sausage, right? <laughs> 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 We got Karina showing off Be Real and her and uh, his squishy sumo friends oh, right here at the up. trade oh, show. Awesome. There it is. In case I need someone to get bounced out. Yeah. <laughs> That's dope. Word up. And Karina's asking, uh, did y'all know cities had siblings? Yeah, sister yeah. cities. But I did not know Chicago was sisters with Toronto. Yeah. Hmm. Who's LA sister? I don't know. Shit, that's a good question. Yeah, right? Look that up. Or favor Beery. That's pretty you, crazy. Do we? I mean, does LA have a sister? S- I, phew, I don't know. I don't I mean, think San I just, Francisco does. I just fucking learned. <laughs> the Chicago and Toronto or sister city. I was like, I've never heard it. Yeah, like, how did that happen? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm wondering if Hello. it's one of those things where one city contributes something to the other, like as a gift or some yeah. shit. Maybe one had the same father or mother. Or like the way France gave us the Statue of Liberty or it, something like it that. It definitely right? dates back to the founder. Yeah, of right. Some sort. They were some shit. They were probably actually related. Yeah, because it, it like. I only I've ever heard is Twin Cities, right? That's like St. Paul and Minneapolis in Indianapolis, right? No, they're in Minnesota, right? Oh, St. Paul. And oh, yeah, that's right. Minis- in Minneapolis, in Minnesota. Yeah, that's right. That's Twin City, right, Bolton? Yes, yes. Right. It so. it seems like L.A. kind of changes the sister cities. <laughs> like, <laughs> it, uh, what do you mean? Of course. Like by the year, it looks like. <laughs> like oh, here's kind so. of a little list. Whoa, Lebanon! Wow, that's hard. Italy. It's- it was it like a four year campaign? Wow. See, I don't know. Oh, wow. Trying to find some. So we just adopt oh, cities to be sisters with. What kind of shit is this? I just googled <laughs> it right here. What it kind says, of family is that? What kind of family is <laughs> that? Know. Look, the city of Los Angeles is the proud sister of over twenty five cities throughout the world. Fuck out of here. What? Yeah. I'm not buying oh. this. Yeah. Th- wow. Look at that. But then again, maybe it's not for sale. There it is. Sister <laughs> cities of Los Angeles. <laughs> Athens. That's dope. Berlin. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Berlin is dope. Word up. And, yeah, and, uh, baby. All right. Yeah. Auckland is cool. All right. So Vidor. many sisters. <laughs> <laughs> that means uh, L.A.'s father was a motherfucker. <laughs> 30 times. Like that one? Yeah. I see what you did you there. You could use that. <laughs> Free of charge. Thanks. <laughs> and then Karina's also saying, yo, had to put little B to work. 
Karina on that forklift. Karina got him doing a lot of shit. Yeah. <laughs> Back to work. Yeah. Back He's to out work. there. Everybody. <laughs> work, 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 work. He's out cheer. That's the most traveled Funko doll of, of all of them. Oh, he's got some miles. He's sure. got miles on him. Be real would be hauling ass in the forklift. Uh, I probably would. Man. <laughs> would I would hurt? Myself. Don't put me in you the ever, forklift. You, you ever drove a forklift? Nah. I would probably I'm sure do. I did at one point. You did? I think so. <laughs> like if it was just sitting around, of course I'm gonna just hop in. It shit happens, you know. Yeah, yeah. Pull up on the forklift. Uh, Pull up. Yeah. Hey, yo, y'all need a lift? <laughs> Are you forklift? Or a fork. <laughs> you forklift certified? We got John showing off a tray of Sunset and Apple Fritter mixed batch, mixed batch of some uh, bubble hash. Ooh. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I would like to have some of that. Yeah. Bring it. That would be a my sign. Yeah, man. You're saying it's about to go into the freeze dryer. All right. Mm. Wait, that's a that's what is that? A strudel? Is is it's, what it's, is that? A pastry? It's like a hash. Wait, it's like a form. It? No, oh, you smoke okay. it. You smoke it's it. Like bubble hash. Got you. Got you. Oh, okay. Damn. It tastes really good. Yeah, you sprinkle that on a joint, yeah. and it's or you or you you know put that in like a you know something you would smoke concentrates in. Mm, Man, yeah. that shit is the power. I remember, I forgot what you had some brother on here that I think he was. Yeah. He was going in on that one. Yeah. He's like, hold on, he he good. He <laughs> like <laughs> Yeah. He, yeah, that was hard. Yeah, you take that shit and, and use it on, you know, this thing here. Right. Blaise. Okay. Huh? Blaze had the record, right? Yeah, Blaze got the two hundred and five flips on that thing. Nah. For real? Yeah, yeah, he yeah. flipped it. As a flip is a hit? Every flip is a hit, like, yeah. Each Yikes. each turnover is a flip. Yeah. So you just keep Good well, the point. first one isn't because it's like accumulating the smoke, right. but every one after that first one, yeah, mm. is like one. Shit. <laughs> He's in the chat room right now. Blaze. How's it going? Word up, our brother Blaze. Get yeah, that man a trophy. Oh yeah, uh, he can. You could what you know pull his lungs out and you know dip them in gold. Boom. Yeah. Big lungs. Gold lungs. Gold lungs. Hey, that sounds like some 007 shit. Yup. Gold, Gold lungs. lungs. Gold lungs. All right. And uh, Smokestack saying, you guys were talking about this the other day. Madonna on her first tour with the Beastie with Boys. The Beasties. Yeah. Madonna is cool as hell, man. Yep. They were probably all tripping on the fact that Madonna was cool like that. That shit is hard. Yeah. This is when they were partying crazy style, too. Awesome. Yeah, they were like, I think they had, like, they were spraying beers on stage. Yeah, they weren't zenned out yet. No. When we went on tour with them, we were the wild ones. That they were the zened out ones. That, ah. you know. Hey, the Beasties kind of like set. They kind of opened up. I heard somebody said that there was like f the forefathers. They said every MC came from, they, and they've had like five of them. Like right. I think, uh, like Kooji Rap was one of the. And then I think LL was one of them. Right. And then there was like everybody came from you, any MC you pick came from one of these five. Right. And so like they was like, yeah, Mace came from LL if you think about you know right. like the ladies, but the Beasties, they got I think they like Far Side definitely kind of same. You know what I mean? Same. Yeah, we come from sort of that. Yeah. Because they were something different than any of those guys over there. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. They had like their own shit. You know, that's that's the thing. I mean, but they were very much influenced by Run DMC, but they had their own shit because they had a three-way rhyme pattern that was crazy. Like, yeah, Beastie Boys, some of the greatest to ever do it right there. I man. remember when that shit came out, everybody was fucking with it. Oh, yeah. It was just one of those everybody was fucking with. Yeah. And nobody gave a fuck the fact that they were white guys. Nah. They no. were just dope. That shit was a salute to the Beastie Boys. That's always been the, the thing about hip hop. I've always felt that it was just always so real. It didn't matter. You had to just be real and you were accepted as long as you were real. That was way more important than anything. If you were doing you. Yeah. yeah. And the Trade thing up. about being real is like it's either real or it's not. And there's nobody that said, tell you if it's real. Everybody be like, nah, it's real. Yeah. Like, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's a just, vibe that comes like, off. You know, it is like naturally. It's almost like what you don't do. It's like you right. see them, they not trying to do nothing. You see they obviously not black and they not trying to be. Yeah. 
So they're just like, being oh, themselves. Shit, they real. You know, they were trying to be fun and goofy. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like laying down dope shit in the process of that. Like they weren't afraid to make fun of themselves. Um, and like just, you know, bring a different sort of part of the song to life. Like their videos were some of the dopest because they were willing to be funny and and oh, you know, yeah. not so taking themselves serious and shit. That was all Rick Rubin? Uh, so I think some of it was, well, yeah. When they did Paul's Boutique, that's when they were out here in L.A., right? That's yeah. when, so... That's the Dust Brothers. Yeah, Dust Brothers. That's when they were doing the whole disco theme and, the, like, doing the crazy videos. That hey, just, but isn't that uh, Matt Dyke? Yeah. Yep, Matt Dyke. Okay, so we talking yeah. uh, Delicious Vinyl. Delicious, delicious Vinyl, yeah. Yeah. which is where you guys came through. Yes, sir. Hey, let me tell you, man, some of my first experiences were in, in the music in the recording industry were through Delicious Vinyl. No shit. Because uh, Mellow Man Ace was signed there. And, uh, you know, Muggs was with 783 with their deal through Geffen or whatever. But initially, Muggs was working on on um, Mellow's first demos. And a lot of the stuff was recorded in that Delicious Vinyl studio with... Uh, with uh, Matt Dyke sometimes engineering and overseeing shit. So, like, I'm, like, fresh out of gang banging, like, hanging with these dudes in the studio, seeing, like, Tone Loke and Young MC come through. Like, just totally blowing my fucking mind because, like, I know who these guys are. They're on the radio. Yeah. And, yeah, it was it was a tripped out experience, man, just getting to see what, what delicious vinyl was building at that time. Yeah, that shit yeah. was pretty cool. And then you guys came along some years later through Paul Stewart, right? Paul Stewart, yeah. Salute to salute to P. Hell yeah, DJ P. P. DJ P. Hell yeah. Every time I call Paul, I'll be like, "There was a DJ, and Paul was his name." You know, uh, yeah. when Montel Jordan be rapping, he, uh, he did that yeah. rapper. That's, That's right. how I start off my conversation. <laughs> DJ P. P. Pulled a lot of nuggets out of yeah, LA, man. man. Coach, yeah, 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 yeah. Paul, was you? Was y'all? We knew Paul. We knew Paul because he was um, he was uh, roommates with our with our homie Skate Master Tate. Yeah, they yeah, they I lived together. That. Is it the dreadlock, bro? Well, or, or... well, he had long hair. Okay, okay. And he might have he might have for a short time had dreads. Yeah, he looked sort of like a John Belushi, but like a skater version of John Belushi. He was down with like a, you know, he was down with Christian Asoy. He was down with Block and yeah, those yeah, guys yeah. and and. Uh, and Tony Hawk, when Tony Hawk was a kid, they used to like co-host this show. He used to co-host this Nickelodeon show about, you know, skateboarding. Anyway, him and P used to live together. And pretty much a lot of the punk rock and, you know, um, new neo funk type shit that was happening in LA, they they'd all they were all friends with this dude. Right. And they would all come there. And so, you know, like and he had a big ass record collection. Mugs would like get a lot of samples from his uh from his collection early on on the first record right but djp lived with with uh tate so we knew him from that time and like some hollywood heavyweight actors and actresses yeah. used to go chill there at, at that apartment right? at that at their crib I, yeah I, it was on it wasn't the long pre was no it was I'm mark martell or something like yeah. gardner yeah yeah it was on gardner and uh you know, shit, man. They would all come kick it with DJP or Skate Master Tate, man. And that's how, how we met Paul, through through Tate. And then we've been great friends ever since then. And It's the white boy from Crenshaw. Yeah, man. You know, that, that's his documentary. He got, yeah. he got a documentary. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah, he's doing a documentary. Salute to him, man. Oh. Always putting in work. All right, what else you got? What's up? It's Everlast, and you're watching the highest show in the world. Yo, what's up? We're Wait. Escape. And we was just rocking with the Dr. Green yes. Thumb show. The, the highest, highest show, show in, in the, the world. world. Yeah, man, it's Jeezy. Jeezy World about to be on the Dr. Green Thumb show. Highest show in the world. You heard? Dr. Green Thumb show, man. You already know what it is. What's up, y'all? It's Lil CC. I'm on the Dr. Green Thumb show. The highest show in the world. What's happening? It's G Perico at the Dr. Green Thumb show. The highest show in the world. Tune in right now. Big shout out to Be Real TV. From Jesse Borrego and Crucito. Los Vatos Locos Forever. Word up. Yep. Uh, make sure you check out the mix after this. One more reminder. All right, C-Los is going to set it off on uh, the video mix 
on Twitch specifically, B underscore Real TV is the place. All right. And now we're going to open up the doors to the Insane Asylum. That means y'all got a comment, question, shout out, sh- suggestion. We want to hear it. Mm-hmm. Welcome to the Insane Asylum. All right, let's do this. We got Sean up in here asking or saying, he's actually saying, my first ever concert was Cypress Hill, Farside, and 311. That's right. I was like 14, and now I'm 43. Hey. I actually lost a shoe in the pit and went home with one shoe during that time. Yes. <laughs> Sounds like something what's that would qu- happen. What's the question? Did you have, do we have the shoe? <laughs> do, do we have the shoe? <laughs> hey, what, 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 uh, what city was that? Did uh, he say? did not say. Oh, hmm. There was a lot of crazy shows in that tour, man. It was Hell a yeah. good time. Hell yeah. If you don't lose a shoe, yeah. did you really he got do a, anything? He right. got a story forever. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? Did you party? Yeah, you partied hard because you went home with one fucking <laughs> one. shoe. <laughs> that meant you probably were on people's shoulders and necks and getting passed around like a joint. What, what's dope is he gets <laughs> to tell you guys the story. Yeah. 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 Word up. We hope you find your shoe. <laughs> 30 years later. 30 years later, yeah. <laughs> I'm still looking for mine. <laughs> ALR saying, yo, B, lit guest today. Of course. It's the legendary fat lip, man. Come on. And Axel Rose is up in the chat saying, I was a bad mother effer back in the day. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you were, yeah, bud. Yeah, he sure was. <laughs> Did you ever see that um, that thing? Someone put it on on IG. It was hilarious. Where a, there's a photo of him and Benny Hill, a present day photo of Axel and a, a picture of Benny Hill. Wait. Yes, and they look alike, bro. <laughs> it's, it's fucked up yet hilarious. You <laughs> know what I mean? That's great. Oh wow, dude. Yeah, so, there it goes. Here, look. Oh, see for yourself. Oh, my <laughs> God. Damn. Ah, I mean, fuck out of here. It's the same smirk, even. It's yeah. on the same side, too. I, I, but oh. Benny Hill was a bad boy. Though. He was. So yeah. it, it, Hell yeah. It ain't even really, you know, Benny Hill had all the bitches. Yes, he did. Yeah, you know? He was a rock star. Yeah, nah, he definitely was. You know what's crazy is that, you know, we as kids, because we're, we're all pretty much in the same age demographic, him being the old guy. Yeah. Um, we all, <laughs> what the sorry fuck? To, uh, 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 we all pretty much grew up to Benny Hill. Oh, yeah. sh- and it was crazy is that that was Benny Hill in the eighties. But did you know he had a show in the nineteen fifties too? Oh, word! Yeah. Benny Hill had a show in the fifties where he was like you know one of the guys. Then you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. And the one we caught was some shit he just did later. Mm. Right, I yeah. just totally see that. Yeah, and I don't like I don't know what what influenced the show that he was doing at the time, um, but it I mean we were catching it at eleven p.m. like mm-hmm. when we we were supposed to be asleep as kids. Yeah, so I was so sneaking that shit off watching Benny Hill. I'll kind of backtrack for the youngsters that don't know what we're talking about. When we were yeah. little youngsters, yeah. uh Growing up, that was the show that was on this late night where he would have like scandalously dressed women in bras. Scantily and, clad women. Yes, yeah. yes. Like, you was always going to see some boobies. So, yeah. 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 It was, yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. a sure. chance for a young guy our age at 12 and 13 and even younger to be yeah. watching a couple of women possibly running it, around in their underwear. Well, yeah, they were wa- running around in lingerie yeah. Yeah. a lot of the times and then cabaret shit. You know, like a lot of skin, <laughs> yeah. a lot of boobs, yeah, a lot yeah. of boobies, and you know, hey, you Benny, go. Benny embellished it. Yo, Benny, he relished it. Yeah. Look at him. Let me ask you this: so, the the, the show that he had on in the fifties was it called Benny Hill? Yes, it was called the Benny Hill Show, but it was just oh. different. Like I don't know what the difference between I, the fifties show and the one we caught. Yeah, because definitely what he was doing from from what we were watching was not in the fifties. Right. Because he wouldn't have got away with half yeah, of that shit. Nah. You know what I mean? So I, I would like to see what, what that 1950s Benny Hill show looked like. Because I'm look, I'm, the way I'm thinking about it, something happened where he switched his style up and yeah. it worked. It but, totally worked. The sketches, the bits, that shit was hilarious. But I, I guarantee you, nobody thought it was going to work. When he was like, nah, I'm about to do a show. It's about to be crazy. I'm about yeah. to be chasing women and 
They're like, nah, you can't do that. Oh yeah. You know what I'm and saying? the little and the little slap on the old man's head every time. Da, 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 da. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, come on. How do you beat that? Like as, <laughs> as, as, as a thirteen-year-old, how I, what like I, I, how are you yeah. tuning out of that, yeah. man? Yeah. I was never tuning out of Benny Hill. I was like, I'm yeah, gonna does watch this. Hat this. Say Drake. <laughs> I don't. It could be. Is that Photoshop? It might be oh USS Drake. Oh, the USS Drake. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh man. That's yeah. crazy. And that theme fucking song. Axl Rose, man. <laughs> Rock star in it. Yeah, that was before the internet, so that was your yeah. chance to possibly see a half naked lady right there. Yeah. 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 Came on like after midnight, like one one thirty, maybe sometime. Oh, we like, used to. No, get, it was at eleven p.m. We used really? to get yeah. busted. Yeah. Like if the TV was on in the room. Like late night, yeah. You my get grandmother busted. busted. Like, oh busted. yeah, if you had a Catholic grandmother oh. or, or a Baptist grandmother, busted. You was wow. like <laughs> fucked. You better not be in there watching that. <laughs> yeah. What are you watching? Because if I remember, it was it was Benny Hill and then the Twilight Zone. Then the Twilight Zone yeah. or, or night or night gallery or something like that. Yeah. It was one of those or, or Outer Limits is either night gallery or, or Outer Limits. Hey, did you ever watch Mash? <laughs> I, you know, here and there, I didn't watch. I don't a lot. think anybody did. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> nah. I, when I think of Mash, it was like, damn, I feel like, like, nah, I ain't gonna watch. It was it. for yeah. the generation before us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think they 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 connect to it better than we did. Like for us, it was just like, a, nah. Yeah. We didn't was, get that humor. They didn't have no like you. You we, we needed to see a like a Mr. Furley. Yeah. Kind of yeah. character like they didn't have no Mr. Furley like, like yeah. Breeze Company type yeah. They had some characters, but it just was it, that. It just or maybe it was too ma uh, too mature f back then. It was. It was. I think. It's also it, about the war, right? Yeah, yeah. It was. Yeah. It was for something we were totally disconnected from, because right, you know right. our generation wasn't even born when that was happening. So you know, I think that's why most of us couldn't really relate to it in in our age demographic. So right. it, it doesn't necessarily mean that much to us. The generation before us, oh yeah, that was their shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was their. Yeah, somebody had to watch it because I mean the accolades from that show were amazing. I mean that. Oh yeah, that oh, mean they won. Show. Alan Alda, bro. Alvin they won uh, yeah. Emmys and all kinds yeah. of shit. You know, oh, yeah. Tonys or not Tonys? Uh, what are they called? Yeah, Emmys and and but, and Tonys. Yeah, I think to Tony or Tonys is stage. musicals for That's plays. Just, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's Emmys. Yeah, yeah, the Emmy for TV. Yeah, or the Golden Globe. I don't know what the I was. I'm trying to figure I out. I think what that's the TV and film, maybe. There you Golden go. Golden Globe, yes. Some shit. It's hard to it's hard to remember all these fucking award shows. You know, what the I mean? EGOT though. You gotta get the EGOT. You gotta get that. that. Right. that shit. Well, yep. that's the Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, Tony. Damn, who got that? There's a uh, couple. Michael Jackson, people. probably. I There's think, a few people. I think Barry that, Manilow. Does he? Yeah, he did some TV specials, his Broadway musicals, and all that. Yeah. And I think Common. Or even John Legend. One of them, yeah. One of them has it. See, yeah, Diddy John might, Legend Hey, does. Diddy might have one. Beery, who's the list of uh, EGOT holders? You got for real, though. He could be, yeah. Uh, oh, here, goes the, John. here goes the list right here. It's a short list, it seems. Uh-huh. John Legend, Alan Menken. John Legend. Damn. Jennifer Hudson. Jennifer Hudson. Viola man. Davis. Sir Elton. Uh, Sir Tim Rice, all right. Andrew Lloyd Webber, is that what it yeah. is? Yeah. That's dope. Or, Tim yeah. Rice, though, that's tight. Who else Scott, you got oh, here? Jennifer Hudson, Hudson, yeah. Okay. Whoopi Goldberg. Whoopi Scott Goldberg. Ruby. Oh, you know Whoopi got one. Yeah. For, she, Mel she got a Grammy, though? Mel Brooks, huh? Yeah, he's the, he, like, some of his shit had music in it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Damn. Damn. John Travolta would have one, but he's just never been on TV, right? Yeah, no, he was on TV. Welcome he was back, Carter. Welcome back, Carter. Oh, yeah. shit. Yeah. yeah, he just did win on the time he was. I think he was nominated, but I don't know if he won. But who knows? Because he did. I don't think he's. He might have the other ones. He might not have the Oscar. Yeah, a lot of people don't have Oscars. You would think have them. You know? Yeah, it's like it's crazy. So it those are like Grammys. The people you thought should have got them didn't get them. The other, the the ones that you're like, what the fuck? How yeah. did they get it? I'm like, Luther Vandross ain't got a Grammy? Yeah, mm, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. You know what I mean? Wow. So, All right, what else you got? 
Uh, Jeff Rosane, salute to the legend Fat Lip. When will we see the whole group, including DJ Mark Love, together for a show? Oh, Mark Love. Oh, man, Mark Love. Well, Mark Love was at this, he was at the last show we did, but, uh, man, it's coming. It's coming. Yeah. We're going to, we probably have him up on the, uh, uh, on the LA show. But shout out to our DJ now, uh, DJ Cell. Yeah. That's LA. right. You know, what up, Cell? That's you what's know, up. You know, we got to keep it LA. Well, from what I understand, DJ Cell actually is a protege of Mark Love. Of Mark Love. Yeah. yeah. And I, Mark Love told me this, and I was I told Cell, I was like, yo, you know Mark Love is going around telling you you're his protege. He was like, I am. Yeah. Like, right, cool. That's awesome. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So it's been confirmed. That's what's up. And Sky's uh, saying, going to see 311 this 420 in Kansas City. When are we going to get another 311 Cypress Hill tour? Saw y'all in Austin with 311 years ago, and it was lit. Uh, we talk about it from time to time when, when we see each other, man. You know, it's all love, so it's, it's, it's always possible. It's all about timing. You know, everybody has a different schedule, and sometimes they line up, sometimes they don't. But, you know, uh, we've definitely been talking about it for a couple years so you never know it might happen shit we, we need to do the reunion tour you know what i'm saying oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah far side, yeah, far side yeah, 311 yeah. cyprus yeah oh my god that would be crazy do they still do Lollapalooza? they do but they just keep it in chicago and um in south america right yep those are the two places they run it now that's why i discovered uh nick cave Nick Caves. I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know. I didn't know an artist like Nick Cave existed. I was just like, "Yo, this dude is, this dude's yeah. a trip." That's man. the cool thing about festivals like that. Is it like you know you might be going to see one particular artist or two, and then you catch somebody that you didn't intend to, and you like become a fan of. That's how it was for me with Soundgarden. Right, we were doing uh, Lollapalooza, the the first one we did, and, and I think it was ninety two, right, and. We go up to the grass area. We took some mushrooms, and Soundgarden goes on. They begin to kill it, and I was like, "Oh shit!" And I instantly became a fan. And it—that's sort of what got me back into listening to metal again. Yeah. Oh yeah, was like watching them rip it and how dope they sounded. <sighs> that's that's the cool thing about festivals, man. It'll introduce you to some shit that you weren't even like expecting, and be like, "Oh my god, I'm a fan of this shit." Yeah, yeah. It broadens your uh, yeah your musical ed education. That's right. Did y'all ever do a rock album? We did. Well, we did. Um, we did the Skull and Bones album, which was half hip hop and then half like the hybrid. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. We did that shit. So, and then we just you know sort of experimented with it throughout like albums before and after and shit. So there was always a presence of it. Oh shit! You missing mentioned uh, Computer J. Yeah. Me and Computer J got a. I got. We was just fucking around in the studio one night and uh, got on some rock shit. That shit actually sounds dope. Oh, <laughs> hey, yeah. That shit is actually dope. Like oh, we're so artists, we could flip on anything, lip. Yeah, you be, and then you. That, so I guess that's why people be like, it's they be like, yo, you gotta challenge yourself because you never <clears> know. Yeah. You can't just limit yourself because you never know. Right, it's true. I mean, like you know, we start off by doing you know hip hop music or whatever, but like. There's always other possibilities if you open your mind to it and be like, yeah. you know what, I'm going to try this shit over here and see how it sounds. You never know. You might unlock something else. Yeah, yeah. And you still have this shit over here. That ain't never going to go away. Now you just unlock the new box. Yeah. And, and, and I think a lot of artists do that. Like, if you think about Snoop. Yeah. How many styles he, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shit, he, he, he came with the uh, sensual. That shit was crazy. All that yeah. shit. No one yeah. saw that coming. No yeah. one. Yeah. Shit, yeah. And then he did the reggae shit. No one saw that coming. But he wasn't afraid to do it. He's yeah. just, you know what? I'm a fuck around. You yeah. know. And then he did that album with Pharrell where he sang, and it was good. Doing songs with Katy Perry and stuff, right? Yeah. 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 California you know, girl. That's yeah. that, that's the thing about Snoop. He ain't afraid to like venture and and like you know take a chance on doing some different shit and i think that's why he's a household name you know because he has taken those chances and won with a lot of them yeah sure you know you might say i don't know about that but for the most part yeah like he's hit some fucking pretty solid home runs yeah with with some of the chances he took and it's always him it ain't like he you know what i mean he yeah. always keep it yes him keep it you know 
He's not trying to do someone else's vibe. He's doing yeah. him all the time. Yeah. Yeah, salute to Snoop, man. This guy's also saying, also, can you take a fat hit from those joints for me and all the other CPA homies having to work with tax deadline today? Oh, shit. Get your taxes Thanks straight, man. <laughs> I got to call Karen. <laughs> oh, my Get them God. taxes straight, baby. Don't listen. Don't stress. You got this, all right? Mm. Just take three deep breaths in through the nose, out the mouth, and say you got this each time. And, uh, you know, it'll help you not to stress. Meditate. You know what I'm saying? Meditate. That's good for you. That's right. Oh. oh. And Hybrid Cypher saying, uh, Fat Lib, thanks for blessing the UK with Lords. And he's saying, The Roots next. Oh, hell yeah. That was dope. We went on tour with uh, Lords and Underground. Oh, man. Those are the homies. Yeah, there. man. That was a dope ass show. Good dudes, man. And uh, Hybrid's also saying, Y'all remember Fat Lip on the Jackass show down the escalator? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Got that little clip right here. Oh, now, shit. did they tell you what you were going to do, or did you tell them what you wanted to do? No, nah, actually, that wasn't for Jackass, right? But <clears throat> <laughs> shout out to uh, Sam Spiegel, which is uh, Spike's brother. Yeah. Mm. So um, Sam and the homie Ben, that's for a video. It ended up on Jackass. Oh, so it, they ended up. It just fit. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> where was that? Vermont and, like, Sunset Escalator. Wow. And I thought the escalator was like, you know, like a mall. Yeah. And, you know, you, you go down the escalator. I didn't realize that that shit was probably like 30 <laughs> feet down. Till I started picking up. He <laughs> started picking up speed up. <laughs> Look at it. Hey, whoa, whoa. Right whoa, there. Whoa, whoa. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, damn. Man, <laughs> that's funny. And there was no getting off that. You were, nah, commi you were committed. I had, I had to, yeah, that's what it was. When I, when I felt it, I was like, all right, I got this. I, got this. <laughs> I mean, you had to, man. You could yeah. be like, oh, shit, I ain't got this. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> oh, man. It was a clean ride, though. Yeah, yeah. It was a clean ride. I, but, because like, I was doing a video, so I, I think I drank a little bit of wine. So I was like, right. I had, a, I was smooth with it. Yeah, what it was. Yeah, you you was vibing. I didn't panic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nah. You didn't seem like you panicked. <laughs> <laughs> well, no done. speed wobble at the end. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> stayed with it. Stayed with it. Oh yeah. Stood hard in the paint. Uh. <laughs> All right. And Hybrid Cipher's also saying the first album. Um, was a crazy cover, the craziest cover I've ever seen, and love your second album. And he's asking, did Jay Dilla change Far Side Sound? Um, Jay Dilla, man, I like to say like Jay Dilla was probably the only one that could have came after Jay Swift. Mm -hmm. Um, he changed it, but probably, I mean, definitely in the best way possible. Yeah. You know, it was still soulful. It was still jazzy. Absolutely. But I yeah. would say the biggest difference was like the drums. Where we, on the first album, we it was all break beats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, but on this one, you know, he had them. He's that, programming that, it. Dilla snares. Yeah. With that Dilla time. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because they got that book right, Dilla That's, time. Yeah. Hey, I can I just clear up something real quick? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Bring it. There's a. In the book, shout out to the brother who wrote Dilaton. Yeah. Um, Damn. But uh, yeah, yeah, cool dude. But everybody thinks that I tried to change the drums for running, and me and Trey got into a fight over that shit. Right. I don't think that's true, but I know me and Trey got into a fight over not the running beat, but, and Dilla was there. He had the ASR and the S9. Oh, he's working we both like, of them. You no, know, well, I just bought the ASR. So, oh, right. So I wanted Dilla to use that. Ah, I see. And, then, and he already had the S9. So I was like trying to like, I was like, yo, man, use it. And then Trey was like, no, don't tell him what to use. And then, and then it, I said, like, yeah, that's, it. that's how it ensued. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Right on. Uh, hey, the things, the things that happen in hip hop. Yeah. Studio stories. Studio man. stories. All right. Extra two is asking Fat Lip, how come Splatatorium <laughs> never got an instrumental? Dope Dilla beat. Oh yeah. That's you that's a good point. Thank God we living in um 
in in technology time because that you can do that now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. stem it out. Stem, stem it, it out, out, baby. Yeah. If I had another set, I would light it up. I mean, that's kind of like the whole. The song is the chorus. But yeah, it is a good instrumental. Oh yep. yeah. And hood hippies is saying, "What's up, gang? Salutes and respects." Big shout to Fat Lip. That was dope. I did the gin. In there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We got Lee's Co saying, "Yo, B, me and the crew rolling through on 420 in Atlantic City, Boston, Woo! son. Bring it, Hard Rock, 420 on 420. the East Coast, on the East Coast, man. Cypress mm-hmm. Hill on the 420 show. Oh yeah. yeah, that's gonna be crazy. Right here with Sublime with Rome, Max, Max and Bronson, nice souls. Uh, this is gonna be one of the last uh, shows that." Uh, sublime with Rome, um, yeah. popping before he goes on, does his solo stuff, and uh, sub- Sublime flips it up. Bradley Son gonna come get down with them. Yeah, yeah, he played with. Uh, they did a show at Coachella this past weekend. Right on, and he sounded great. I know he did. So this is you saying this is a new lead singer about to come on for Sublime for Sublime. Yeah, after this year, and Bradley. Um, Bradley Bradley's son, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. The original singer's uh, son, oh, who is shit. now is of age, is singing now, and oh. they're gonna put him at lead now. Yeah, that's dope. That's dope. Man. Congratulations. That's gonna be tight. Oh yeah. All right. Shout to Sarah and shout to Jake. Thank you guys so much for the super chat. And we got vote for Dro saying, "Sad, I wasn't able to make it today. Passing me by and running will forever be cult classics that everyone relates to. Any stories behind those songs?" Uh yeah, well, passing me by, you know that was there was really a dopest Ethiopian, uh, but uh, just even yo even how the song came about, we was just in the studio, high as hell, and um, shout out to Booty Brown Romai, uh, who's not you know really rocking with us, but shout out to Romai because J Swift. Wanted to make two different, because, you know, it's two different samples. Right. Mm -hmm. One for the chorus, one for the uh, verse. He wanted to make two different beats. So it was Romai uh, that said, nah, put them two records together. Yeah. So he he did that. And then then he was actually the one that was listening to the melody. was just like, yo, shit seems like time keeps on passing me by. He said that to me. Yeah. High as hell. And that's when it happened. Yeah. (laughs) And then, but I was like, I was like, yo, time... I was like, what about she? And then, hmm. and then, and then the rest is history. There it they is. Wrote they shit. That's one of the classic hip hop joints in the pantheon Damn. of classic Straight. songs, baby. Damn, huh? son. Damn. Where'd you get that? <laughs> yeah, <Bonafide>. no. <laughs> Bonafide classic. Hell yeah. Bonafide classic. Timeless classic. 100. All right. And Josh is saying, Lips been a favorite artist of mine for the storytelling rhymes, like on the song Why. Uh, do you feel storytelling in hip hop isn't as prevalent as it was? Um, maybe not, maybe not, but I'm not gonna say. You know, there are uh, some so, artists that do, right? I think so. I mm-hmm. think I think now I think now it's just like a different vibe. People are yeah. you know more like getting getting the party going. You know, it's more of a like a melodic flow. We was like yeah. novelists. We was like I'm True gonna that. tell this story. Mm-hmm. Let me think, but yeah, it's definitely stories. But yeah, I think, ba- like back then, nah. <laughs> I think I think also the attention deficit. Yeah, <laughs> that, oh, that yeah. happens. You know, you like, gotta sit down and listen to a story. Yeah, you gotta like actually like stay on the story, and it's <laughs> I think it's harder for some of these cats these days. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Although you you know like there are some that like will tell the tell a fucking good story, man. It's just you gotta weed through it and find them. Yeah. Hey, you know what though? I think like podcasts are the is the new stories. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like I, I like I noticed that it's like like what these kids are doing, influencers and all of that shit. I feel like that's the same energy that we put into songs. Absolutely, like, like putting that shit into you know this multimedia format. Yeah. Hell yeah. All right, what else you got? And Michael uh, Alvarez is saying, last week, Diggable Planets were in the area on my birthday and Farside tomorrow on my son's birthday. He's also saying Chuck D on Thursday. Oh, boy. Saying the oh universe boy. will unite us again for sure. Good to see you, Fat Lip. And, man, can we get uh, 
Can we get blessed with a birthday shout out? Happy birthday, yeah. man. It's your birthday. Salute to you. May you smoke some top shelf weed yeah. today. No boof. No boof. And boof. Uh, have all your good uh, friends and loved ones around you, not the halfway friends. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Trues. The ones who got your back as you have their back. And celebrate yourself. Not for the month, for the day, all right? <laughs> for, the, uh, for the week, at least. Or for the week. Yeah, there you go. And oh. Alex is saying, me and my mom are going to uh, Chiba Hut for 420. All right. We are going to be getting the Cypress Hill Lowrider drinks as well as smoke some smoke some weed out of my Green Thumb Dash. Happy early 420. Bust them out there. Good drinks. And I'll tell you what, Chiba Hut got, like, really good food. Like the sandwiches mm. there, are, right, Trace? Oh, I loved it. And the whole thing about it is it's it's kind of like our culture, man. It's on the stoner hip-hop vibe. And... Yeah, I saw some stoner vibe shit. Yeah, that's oh, what man. it sounds like, Chiba Hut. Yeah. But, they, but is it like infused? No, no, oh, it's, okay. just, uh, it's just food, but like the, the theme and culture of it is like, you know, cannabis friendly. Dope. You know what I'm saying? Everything's got like a... It's munchy food type thing, but stoner like... Stoner nicknames. Yeah. Nice. Dope. Good food. It's really good, yeah. And the drinks are pretty, pretty damn good too. They were on hit. Mm -hmm. We had some uh, when you know we they were creating them, and they're pretty damn good. Yeah, they got like passion fruit and all these, and they mix different ones. And new, oh, if you mix this one with this one, oh man, next level. Damn, wow. where's it at? I might have to go there. After all that. over. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's they're like along this tour, they're they're we're gonna Cheap see a few of them. Yeah. Damn, that looks good. Yeah, they got good Open stoner face. Fruit. Yeah, good stoner food, man. I'll tell you what. Nah, I'm hungry. All right. Shout out to Sin Dog. <laughs> Sin Dog. We got Hybrid Cypher again saying, I get records like it's 1995. I get them more for the album art. Yeah. Mm, nice. Yeah. So nice. that's so that was, you know, we talked about that a couple times that sometimes the album art is the shit that gets you. You don't even know who the group is. It, you might see it and be like, oh, shit, I got to have this. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you might get you might get won over by the music, maybe not. But like the album covers, like were the ones that used to snatch you in. It's like mm -hmm. buying a bottle of wine. A good label will get you. You know yeah. what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, I, but I heard Q-Tip say that too when he was talking about uh, how he digs for beats, and I never thought of that shit. It was he was like. He was like, yo, look, 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 yo, he's on the Cadillac, and then he got the girl. Like, that's, he's like, I knew this was had some shit on it just by looking at it. Based oh, off yeah. of the cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because if you're, if you're not cool, your album cover's probably not going to be cool. Yeah, it ain't so it's a cool. good indication. Like, if you see a cool album cover, yep. might be some cool people behind that shit. Exactly. Yeah, and if man. it's stiff, yeah. you're going to know it when you see it. Yeah. Straight up. Big shout to OG Diamond. Thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you, Diamond. And we got Rachel from San Diego saying, just saw a sting in concert. All the kids went wild for a shape of my heart that Juice <laughs> World sampled. Cool to see the kids get into it. That's right yep. on. See, that's the, the, that's the whole shit, right? A lot of them oh. kids got put on the sting because, you know, Juice World used the sample, right? Yeah. And they're like, well, let's go see what Sting's about. Oh, this dude is playing. And pff, the song comes on, they go nuts. That's, Went crazy. That's that shit. And, that's dope. And more and more kids are going back to, to, to 90s hip-hop this way. They're going to the playlist, listening to all the shit, and then, like, buying tickets to the shows of the artists that are coming up. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy because, I mean, I know y'all see it. We've seen it in oh, the last yeah. few years that, like, our... <laughs> Are are um, yeah. There's the people our age at the show, but there's more kids now. Like, it's crazy for that for our fucking music. There that know the words, that know the the get down, and it's like, oh shit, they they are going back and listening to these playlists and getting familiar with the music. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're hearing it for the first time. Yeah, and they're experiencing experiencing it. Like it's the '90s, like it. That vibe has really got preserved. Yeah, and people are like, like for us, eighty-five percent of the people that are at our shows are like twenty-two and under. Yeah, that shit is crazy. Yeah, it's right? crazy. And then some some people um, are bringing their kids. A lot of people are bringing their kids. Yeah, it's just it's it's dope. Passing right. down the the you know the music. 
Hell which yeah. is awesome. I know you got some tattoos. I know somebody oh, came up to you and oh, be like, for sure, like yo, listen, man, with a Cypress tattoo yeah. and shit. That's the shit. I that know trips. you get that shit all the time. Yeah, that's the shit that that tripped me out at first. Like seeing the first one, I was like, oh damn, because it's the shit you only see like with groups before yours. Like you would see ACDC and you know other bands. You know, like let's just say. Um, Iron Maiden or something like that tattooed on people. I mean, you've seen that in in other forms of music, but like you had, I hadn't really seen it in hip hop. And then when I seen our first Cypress Hill tattoo, I was like, oh shit, that's crazy. Back in ninety something, yeah. and I was bugging off that because like I didn't even have one of our, <laughs> of our shit yet. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, damn, they have one and I don't. That's yeah. kind of stank. But um, that's that's fans for you, man. And salute to all them who Hell, yeah. felt the 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 love enough to you know put our logos you know on uh on their bodies that's love right that's there. love mm-hmm. the pope is asking what would a far side hill album sound like dope let's go let's find out <laughs> yeah, yeah. Find only out. one way to find out mm-hmm. Bring it. that's my, a good my, question. my shit was uh i mean of course you know hand on a pump and you know how i could just but like Funky Feel one. Oh, yeah. That, that was just because it, I don't know what sample that was, but it, it was, it reminded me of like some Afro Cuban yeah. type of thing. That That's my shit, the Afro Cuban, like, because it's the, it's like the Congos and the. Yeah, that the, vibe. Know, that, that vibe, boy. Yeah, Muggs was good at that, at, at chopping all that shit up, man. That's SP12. The same. Shout out to uh, J Swift. J Swift, he got that, 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 that Afro, you know, that Afro Latin. Thing, yeah. His dad was a um, jazz bass player. Bass player, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. To eight hey, those drums on that first record, man. The way he chopped those breaks up, man. Yep. Just so incredible. Salute Jay Swift. Yep. Shout out to Tony B. Thank you for your super chat. And we got Western Good saying lip. Thank you for the timeless music. Salute to the far side. Salute. And we got Utah Hawk saying, uh, two weeks from today, I will be feeding you guys in Salt Lake City. Cannot wait. Fat Lip, you and the crew are welcome to grub also. I will bring enough to feed the whole venue. Yeah, this guy, oh. <laughs> his food is incredible. Yeah, he does really good food. I'm with it. He rocked. I thought uh, that was a menu. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was about to start ordering. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, no, yeah. Man. He's our boy in Utah, man. He like, uh, um, on one of Bobo's birthdays, he, he you know, came and killed it. For Bobo, damn, and so you know, at the venue, basically, like set up a impromptu restaurant, basically, Shop. yeah, chefing with yeah. all the shit and that sound check. Oh, he was chefing like a motherfucker. And we got Benny Hill in the super chat saying, "Yo, I was a bad mother <laughs> effort too." Yes, yeah. <laughs> salute, Benny Hill, dude, he sure was. Hey, thank you, Benny, for all the years, yeah. for all the laughs and boobs. <laughs> we all owe you a, a we debt all of owe you a debt of <laughs> 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 And I read curls the same big up to my homie Ronnie Loke, who was on the Far Side Street team. Um, he got me into the Far Side back in '92, and later got me in the backstage at Lollapalooza '94. Nice, dope. I wonder if they're talking about Ron Hill. Could Ron be. Hill, Ron Hill worked with uh, Paul Stewart, and he Word. was on the street teams. Could be. Yeah, yeah. And uh, let's see, we got. HC saying Benny Hill was way more famous in the United States than the UK. Oh, yeah. really? I heard that too. I really? knew it. It was some underground yeah. shit. Yeah, like a lot of a lot of the people in in um, England didn't really fuck with Benny Hill that much. What? Yeah. I heard that the Queen actually had a problem with it. Probably it wasn't a good look for their country. Yeah, because he was too raunchy. Yeah, he was taboo for them. Man, oh. Benny Hill was like. Luke Skywalker back in the day. <laughs> yeah. Like, like Uncle Luke. Yeah. Uncle, like Uncle Benny. Bro. I like that. Uncle Benny, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Hey, they need to do a mashup, though. Hey, England, Don't if y'all. Don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have Benny hey, up there. Man. He was the first. For real. Was. Yo. If y'all didn't love him, uh, England, we sure as fuck did. And it was always, like you said, it was always, you're going to see some boobies for sure. They were going to yeah. flip they, out. They probably gonna... thought it was cheap humor, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh. Low, low brow. Low brow, yeah. It was beautiful. Bring it. Uh, Michael Valley is saying, I met Fat Lip at the first Mushroom Cup in Oakland. Hella nice guy. Hell yeah. 
Lip, you spent a lot of time up in the Bay Area with your career, up in yeah. Northern California. Yeah, yeah, so I yeah. remember you up in the Bay Area a lot. Yeah. Well, we was talking about the Gavin, right? Yeah, that, yeah. That, that was where we got. That's where we got signed. Hey, shout out to Razzcast. I don't know if everybody knows this, but Razzcast is definitely the reason why Farsi got a record deal. Well, that's he was up. at the Gavin that day. Wow. And he, he, he led saw us y'all to the to the hotel where uh, everybody was partying, Paul Stewart and everybody, and then we went went up there and we did your mama live and shit and Paul Stewart was like another classic shout out to Raz Cass. So, Raz but yeah Cass. the Bay was always I love the Bay man always open yeah I just didn't realize it's actually fast paced for, I didn't realize how fast paced it was like, like it is it it's is. slightly faster than LA I didn't realize that yeah. for a long time and it's a I little was, New York kind of type thing with the I, neighborhoods and that yeah, type of thing, for sure. Yeah, and, and for some reason, I was all when I was thinking of the Bay, I was kind of thinking like Berkeley, mm. and then and then so because of Berkeley, I was thinking. But then every time I go out there, I'm like, yo, this should be lit. The clubs, they got oh, yeah. some dope DJs out there too. Oh, no for doubt, sure. no doubt. Some of the best, and they got love for Far Side out there, no doubt. Yeah, no doubt. And Jay, all the way from Germany, is saying Monday night, almost 1 a.m. here and smoking a big hash joint with my two brothers. Life is good. Love to all y'all. And uh, how much to get you on a German rap song, B? Oh, wow. Look, you can uh, go. <laughs> like how he snuck <laughs> that in there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Email berealtvcontest at gmail.com and you know, we'll discuss. Have your cryptocurrency yeah. ready. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Salute to y'all. Serious watching. inquiries only. <laughs> <laughs> Salute to y'all for watching this late. You know, this is a late show for everybody on that end of the world, man. What poppin'? Axel is saying salute to the THC crew and the table. Everyone smoke up. Word. Smoke. And uh, the last one so far, we got Fernando saying shout to all y'all. Much love all the way from Tahoe. Much love, for Fernando. And we want to say much love to all y'all for getting down with us today on the Dr. Green Thumb Show. And we want to thank Fat Lip for sitting in with us first of many times. Yes, yes. And uh, look forward to getting uh, on tour and, you know, knocking it down from show to show with y'all, man. Man, we're going to have a good time, bro. That's right. I'm ready. Word. I got I got my I got my no suitcase. No. I got a suitcase with nothing in it. You got an <laughs> empty suitcase <laughs> ready to go. <laughs> All right. Uh you got any shout outs you want to give? Man, shout out to my crew, man. Far side, Imani, Fat Lip. Damn, I just shot on myself. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Third person. <laughs> hey, sh- shout out to myself. That's right. Shout out yeah. to nice yourself. That you get along, God, though. At least you get along with yourself. Yeah. 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 Good. Yeah. If I can't shout myself out, who, can who, who could you out? shout out? Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, Slim Kid, DJ Cell, Suave. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to see these cats, and we about to hit the road, man. Shout out to you. Thank shout you, Shout out sir. to everybody, man. Dr. Green Thumb. That's you what's know, up. And Shirley Jew. I think Shirley Jew might have set this up. Yeah, she did. Yeah. Salute to Shirley Jew. And, uh, man, have a great show out there in Baltimore, right? You guys yeah. are doing Baltimore? Yes, sir. Word up. And I'll see you in Boston. It's going down. That's right. C-minus, you got any shout-outs? Uh, Shout-out to everyone here at the table. Trace, B, Fat Lip, always a pleasure, good sir. Yeah. Uh, Shout-out to the Trios crew, Dom, Bolton, and Ray Morningshot Films. Shout out to Javi Lopez. Shout out to Pedro. Shout out to E Zone. Shout out to Psycho Less. Shout out to Cali Blaze. And shout out to Steph Tone. And shout out to you for hanging and watching with us. Shout out to my mom. I love you, mom. And uh, you can follow me at C Minus Fan 4. And I'm going to do a rock mix tonight at 7 o'clock on my Twitch channel. So join me there, C Minus Fan 4. I'm out. What up, Bolton? Yo, shout the Insane Asylum. Thank you guys so much. Shout the uh, <clears throat> got a little cough here going on. Shout oh to Ray Morning Shop Films. Shout to the Dominator. And uh, what's going on, Trace? Big shout out to all the guys around the table. Fat Lip, man, fun hanging out with you, man. I ain't yeah. seen you in about twenty years, so it's good catching up with you. I'll yes, see sir. you as well out in Boston. We can have fun on this tour, man. The show. Uh, big shout out to all the Instagram followers out there. If you want to give me a follow at Trace Nunes, and uh, make sure you guys all pay attention. I'm having a cookbook coming out. Oh, are you? I, I do, oh. you guys. <laughs> oh, yeah, with your syrup. <laughs> B, let them know. <laughs> <laughs> Don't pour syrup oh. over your waffles for 10 seconds oh. at a time. 
swallow that.